our heroes ventured deep into the temple on high alert. Upon arriving at the bottom, they discovered a room made entirely of gold, with a statue of the Yantese god, the collective one in the center. Along the way, they came across a gang of Faraday's men, who commented that Skrung bore a striking resemblance to the Goblin King. Soon, they came face to face with their target, an undead snake man who skulked out of the shadows. Thanks to Ziaka's communication with the creature, it became clear it was no threat. What would be a threat, however, was the object that had been removed from the room, a jewel known as the Collective One's Heart, said to keep the island afloat. The crew went to report to Faraday. However, the conversation swiftly turned sour as Wake learned that Nedra had been held as a slave by the Fine Day Boardwalk Company. Through some aggressive negotiations, the team left with their new tiefling companion in tow. Back in town, they reported their findings to Mary Pibbs, who sent them to meet with the town's necromancer, Mr. Rattles. They met the Lich in his shop, and using his otherworldly magics, he produced an image of the man who attacked Nedra in the temple and who defiled Yeldon Cave. The man behind the abyssal threat, Victor. They also learned of his abductions in the town and that they may be tied to an ancient hidden nest of mind flayers located on the island. Encountering their friend Timothy on the way out, they came upon another disturbing revelation. Upon his arm was the same scar as Nedra's, it would seem Timothy was Victor's next target for his vile experiments. Hello, everybody, and welcome to, to Wednesday. The... What? What? Whoa. Welcome to the table. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Uh, we are Please. here. We are back. Grant is back from his. I just flew in from Ohio, and boy, are jokes set setups exhausting. Hey. You take a disadvantage on your next roll, whatever it is. <laughs> Minus two to charisma for the day. Yep, for the day. Uh, that gives me a net one. Oh, he gets a, oh so that means uh, you get a negative a one. modified one, I guess. <laughs> yes, it's Wednesday and D today. So uh -huh. we are, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I just thought of that one. Ooh, it's, it's good. I like it. We right, should switch this to Wednesdays. That works better. Please, yep. no more scheduled fucking <laughs> McGuffinry, <the> please. <laughs> No, from now on, we'll be on on Tuesdays, as per the norm, until the holiday break when we will be taking an actual break, because hopefully we'll be done by with Chapter 1 by then. Uh, by the way, I'm looking at this script. Uh, at worst, three more sessions. At the best, What do you two. mean, at, at worst? worst. Oh. <laughs> What's that at supposed? longest, my friend, <laughs> at longest. Most. At worst, at best, at longest, at shortest. <laughs> <laughs> These don't lie, okay? <laughs> do they? I don't uh, know. That's a 15, so it might lie. I don't know. One yeah. of those told you that the undead don't exist, so. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's talking to a fucking Have skeleton. You seen him? <laughs> nice I, costume, Grandpa. <laughs> I, I choose to believe you're not real. Pull my finger. No, really, dude, dude pull it. Grandpa. <laughs> it's a fancy illusion you got there. Nice dad joke you got there, Grandpa. Oh, fuck you, kid. <laughs> <laughs> I All made right. myself a lich for this dad joke, I'll have you know. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, in all seriousness, our friend Timothy is in dire need of assistance. He is in trouble. He's under attack. And something. we need to... We need to <laughs> he knows something Terry. that we don't. Then again, he knows a lot of things that we don't. <laughs> he just flew in from the pumpkin patch, and boy, are his arms necrotic. <laughs> Yes, his, his arm is burned, searing Son of a bitch, you worked that so... This is why you're the bard. <laughs> it's all from a piratey joke book. No, not really. <laughs> yeah, was that one in the SpongeBob book? <laughs> There's a whole section under necrosis. It's pretty great. Kind of morbid Patrick for SpongeBob. <laughs> Rhymes with halitosis. I mean, the comedy is just... <laughs> it sells itself. <laughs> all right, so... Uh, where we left off, we had uh, just talked to Mr. Rattles, and yeah, it seems like Timothy has been attacked by Victor. Yes, and we he know has. that there are abductions going on in the town, so I think uh, after we've informed you know, Mr. Rattles, I think it would be best for us to uh, inform Deimos of this, because he seems to be the one with his eye on the town, and he seems to know everything that goes on before everybody else. Well, you guys have... Uh 
sent Abigail and uh, Timothy to go off to this flappy stingray yeah, where you feel that might know. be the safest. Well, I, I, well, my plan was to use Timothy as bait to lure them out. <laughs> this might be the most dangerous place. <laughs> mm -mm. Yeah, so basically, like, kind of, kind of to formulate a plan around that to see, like, oh, if he's after Timothy, and we can keep an eye on Timothy. Like, this is our first chance of really knowing who is he after. Right. And you know, I, I can see why he's a giant troll, <coughs> and you know, what, what, what does he think he can make out of that? That he doesn't even know. He wants to know. He wants to know, but he yeah. didn't get the chance to. Which means that he either, like, he might not have given up is the thing. That's fair. Because that's a, that's a pretty hefty chance to go after that. All righty. So it's currently midday still. You guys uh, feel like you have some more time to kill before heading back to the Stingray. Uh, Mary has also told you guys that uh, Mead and Haros have gone off, but they should be back shortly. So... You know, kill time as you see fit for now. All right, I, I vote that we go to the bank and just talk to Deimos real quick. Just let him know, like, you know, hey, I'm sure you're aware, but your people that were sent off to Yeldon are dead. Uh. <laughs> uh, guys, we can we can do that first. That's that's top priority. If we have Absolutely. time, I would like to go by the temple. It has recently, recently come to my attention that I did a wicked with magic when I was not aware of it, and I just want to make sure that I'm... I just want to make sure that I'm okay. We'll definitely make sure to go to the temple after we talk to Damo. Okay, you are, you. Go, you we'll are go. the closest to the temple, though. It's literally down the street from you. I think this is more important. <laughs> right, <I'm, laughs> look, look, man, this is Timothy we're talking about. I'm not going to argue yeah. with you. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. So uh, you guys are going to end up going we're gonna to the opposite to, end of town now. Yeah, we're going to talk. We're going to go into the bank and ask for some spare change. All righty. It takes you, like, I'm going to say two, three hours to get across Jesus town. This is a big town. It's a... You're on, on you're, foot. It's rush yeah. hour. You're, <laughs> you're on the left side of the harbor. The bank's on the right side of the harbor where the residential area is. Fortunately, I have a feeling uh, Udoth isn't going anywhere. So if we get back a little late. Well, I, think, I, I might be if he's mad at me. <laughs> the temple's still there. Look, we, still, look, we just got to talk to this other god first, okay? Like, we're still talking to gods. I'm hey, sure you don't know. I, I don't we're know. We're talking to a, representat a representative who might be the god. Or he could be. You don't know. Exactly. That's that's why I'm throwing it out there, that we may as well just assume we're talking to the god. All right. I mean, I can ask Deimos if I'm okay, too. I'm just, I'm powerful, scared of both of them. I'm, I gotta be honest. <laughs> All righty. So you guys head to the bank. I walk up to the teller. Um, do you have any spare change? No, but uh, why don't you head on out the back, you freeloader? Ah. All right. I head off out the back. There's a bank that's not getting my gold. <laughs> you open I, the door, and it leads to the small compartment that goes down the staircase you guys left from. I, tip, again. I tip her 20 gold before we leave. <laughs> the, no, I don't, I don't, the bank? Yeah, teller? yeah the, the teller kind of like looks at you just like, do you want to open an account, sir? What's... I can count to 10, 14 if I use my hooves. Uh, <laughs> Eloy, don't I just we're, don't worry about it, ma'am. He's just feeling very charitable today. <laughs> she just rakes in the gold. <laughs> Eloy doesn't know what gold is worth. <laughs> Clearly. All right, so you head downstairs. You are now on like the sixth layer of uh, floor of platforms. And you are now face to face inside the uh, Underdark. All right, we are going to uh, make our way back to where we originally audienced with Deimos. All righty, you head back over to the rather large uh, cavernous tunnel that leads you back into a small little prayer section. And uh, you are now, like, since you have been here, the guards and pretty much all the clerics are just like, they're just nodding as you go by. They're a okay with you being there. There's. You, you, again, you see the rat folk mostly, but there are a couple of goblins and some drow dressed in the same attire. You get to the back. You're now in the council of the six uh, rat folk who all, like, look the same. And they all speak in unison. Welcome again. Greetings, Deimos. 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 Uh, there was no need for that, but thank you nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not used to Deimies? <laughs> Deimices. Anyway, um... They all like they all just like lean their heads in in unison at you like proceed. Uh we uh made our way to that cave you told us we might find some aid and I'm sure you've heard by now but it was not a pretty sight that we found. 
Actually, we were not informed of this. All right. Well, uh, it turns out that a lot of your people that were sent there were killed and desecrated by the man that is in the man that's causing this uh, lockdown. Do you have any other information you wish to impart upon us? Uh, only that his name is Victor. He is a old elven man from the military. He looks to be a, some, some higher rank, maybe a lieutenant, probably not a captain. And uh, currently he is abducting people in this town, and we believe we know his next target. How long ago do you believe that the deaths of our kind lingered in those caves? Mm. I'm going to do a, like... You want to do a, a knowledge, like yeah, a history, just, uh, like a straight-up intelligence check. Twelve. A twelve? You can't really discern the time, but I'd you... I'd say less than a week, maybe. That's fair. You, you, by, by the course of the bodies, you feel like it was a week that has gone by. Yeah, they've, they've been dead. They were dead for maybe a week, and they were being uh, both digested and covered by the uh, slime that was in the cave. But more than that, he was using them to grow, uh, well, I don't have any more of them on me, but these abyssal tumors. You can ask Dr. Rattles or Mr. Rattles about them. They all turn to each other. And kind of like whisper in this weird cant. You can actually understand say, it. <laughs> Want to let me know what that is? Or, uh, yeah, or... yo, you can hear it in plain sight. Like to them, it's just like hissing and grunting. Okay. But to you, you can understand them that they are like expressing sorrow and they're okay. expressing sorrow. They're feeling that this is not information they have granted. Someone has actually broken through their scheduling okay. and their information of like passing info between the islands and they knew of this time slot so okay they're, so they're actually discussing how they feel they should show gratitude towards you at this point okay and all right. they all stop and turn back to you guys you're good you can stop now <laughs> okay we're good <laughs> all right so uh after they've uh they've all could be clicking and <laughs> yep for, smooching for, at each other. <laughs> and somehow you understand the rat talk. Yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh why my. is they, you two notice e Ezra's kind of like sitting in the huddle corner just well, just going, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so they they all look towards you. This deeply saddens us. We are we are going to have to take some time to process this. However, the blessings of Deimos would like to be bestowed upon you for granting us this information. They hand all three of you a small vial of black ichor looking goo inside of a bottle. I pull out these six other black ichor vials that I have, like the tiny little, mm -hmm. like, are these things the same? They take the other vial. It's of a different make. The bottle is actually shaped of a rat, not the wow. other ones you found. Okay, so we got a rat-shaped ichor vial. Yep. Do not fear, for if you ingest this, you will become one with the shadow. A potion of invisibility. Yo. Ooh. Why have you? This will only last for four rounds okay. in combat. So a good ten minutes out of combat. Giving oh, secrets sure to those who share and divulge in them is of a great blessing. We will not forget this, and we will have your thought. We will have your deeds in our prayers when we pray to uh, pray towards the true one. Well, uh, thank you, and we are sorry for your loss. Indeed. If you, you could, uh, I know you have a network of spies here in town. If you could keep an eye on our friend Timothy for us. Um, we're going to try to be tracking him, but we believe that he is the one that is being targeted next. The ogre, yes? Yes. Very well. As you wish, we will dispatch informants to keep an eye on him. Excellent. That way, if uh, anything were to happen to him, we'd be able to find him. We will find it very difficult that the man who has done this may not be able to reach the Northern Islands as easily as he once did. If we have any information to give of you, please know that you will be told as soon as possible. 
Thank you, Deimos. They all bow their heads in unison. Thank, thank you, Mr. Deimos. They stand, they stand at attention, just waiting for you guys to do whatever you're going to do. All right. We uh, just kind of bow and take our leave with that uh, information taken. Yep. And off you go. So you're yep. back outside. Yep. We'll uh, head to your temple now. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I, I know those Deimos boys seem real nice, but boy, they're powerful spooky. Uh, yep, hidden. What? Hidden. There's a small goblin sitting next to you in the robes. I know, right? Ah! <laughs> oh, hello. Do you do you worship the Deimos Mayan too? Is yes, that... son, I do. He was just there. he was just there to spook you. He was having a, he was having a, he was having a jape on you. Okay. <laughs> he, like, he just like pats you on the leg and then runs off. Maybe we should have asked him about the <laughs> Goblin King. <laughs> What if that was the Goblin King? We'll oh, never man. know. Then, well, oh, man, that's going to bother me all that's day. That's a secret in a secret. You realize <laughs> that, right? <laughs> Holy man. shit. The, go- the Goblins in League with Deimos. That's just a fucking enigma. <laughs> man, no if, what's going like, on with that. look, our theory is still somehow that Skrung is either the king's long-lost brother or the king himself. <laughs> I was going to say, I want him to be the king. I want that to be the reveal. In any so case... Bad. So uh, you guys decide you want to head over to the temple? Yes. Yep. All right. It is now close to nighttime. The sun is starting to set. The orange glow is gleaming over the entire like horizon. You guys reach the temple, and uh, the door is closed. Ooh, I'll, I'll try and make this real quick, you guys. I just, like, knock on the door. By knocking on the door, you mean taking the giant ring and slamming it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, politely. Tink, tink, tink. <laughs> Loud enough to get attention, but not quick enough to seem aggravated. You open the door, there's no one there. You look down, there's a familiar kobold standing there. Hey! Hi, Rhys! Oh, hello, friends. Do you just live here? I spend most of my time here communing with the other gods. Do you sleep here? Father Dorn is very nice for me to have lodging here when I make port. That is very nice of him. Uh, look, Eloy really wanted to talk to Udoth real quick. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Please, come in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Riss, let, let me ask you a question. I, I never knowed none of the gods except for old lady Big Rock Mountain, and I, I could never make her happy. She was always powerful, mean to me. Nothing against her. I'm sorry. But, but Udoth was real nice when you had me talk to him earlier. How is he with, with, with people who are sinful and wicked but want to get better? You wish to confess. I guess so. Well, I'm not one who takes confession. I could give some solace, but Father Dorn would be better suited to answer that. Is he around? He's sitting. He's standing at the middle of the altar. He's like sitting in his table, looking over a couple of charters. Okay, all right. I'll I'll ask Father Dorn then. Th- thank you, Riss. He like just steps to the side and ushers you in. Excuse, excuse me, Mr. Father Dorn. <laughs> <laughs> yes, son. I think I need to, to make a confession. Um, do you wish it to be public, or do you wish it to be private? Um, how how public is public? I mean, these guys already know they're my friends. Hi. Hey, I say, kind of working my way over to the statue of Kelpie, <laughs> just looking it up and down. I, I don't if mind. You are, if you are, if you are, if you are very comfortable with speaking your mind as clearly as day as you stand before me, then please, by all means. So, growing up. I was always taught that that magic was wicked and evil, but but my friends my friends taught me that that it's that magic is okay as long as you don't do nothing wicked with it. But I'm pretty sure that I played a, a magic song with my flute that that played a wicked donkey man trick on him and and made him give me free passage and apples and he didn't want to do that and when it wore off he was powerful mad. And and boy back home the. The herd elders would tell me that, that that would make Old Lady Big Rock Mountain powerful mad, and I don't want no gods mad at me. Did I do a wicked, sir? A minor one at such, but nothing that cannot be forgiven. Okay, that's, that's good. What do I have to do? What do you feel is the most comfortable for you? I mean... <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know nothing about this sort of thing. The, the most comfortable for me would be not getting killed by a rock slide, which is what <laughs> traditionally happens 
to wrong to sinful, wicked, evildoers. I mean, anything short of that w- would be great. Father Dorn is just sitting there, just like you know, like fucking uh, Frollo, just sitting in his chair, <laughs> just takes his long, spindly fingers and just goes, "Okay, I'm working with a yokel." Stand before the statue of Deimos. Confess your sins, and he will forgive you. Oh, it's going to be the spooky one. All right. Um, <laughs> no offense, Mr. Deimos. You, you've, you've done, you, you've been powerful good to us, and I appreciate it. Mr. Deimos, the, I... The rat statue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And again, Eloy's the only one seeing this. Yeah, Eloy's the only <laughs> yeah. one seeing this. I'm just yeah. looking at this Seymour statue. I'm just standing outside. I'm not a religious guy. <laughs> Looking at my staff. Mr. Damos, you probably heard me. I know you hear everything and see everything as far as I know. You probably heard me tell Mr. Father Dorn what I've what I done. And I'll, I'm powerful, sorry, and I won't never do it again. Am I good? It doesn't respond. All right, I'm... I'm gonna assume I'm, I'm good. I don't know what else to do, but if, if you need me to do anything for you... I don't know if you like music. That's pretty much all I got. It doesn't respond. Are you speaking to Udoth? Are you speaking to... Like, you're standing in front of Udoth, speaking to Deimos. Oh, I meant to go over. He told me to talk to Deimos, so I meant to go over. Oh, no, he said to go speak to Udoth. Oh, okay. He said speak to Deimos. Oh, I did? Yeah. Jesus. Okay. I'm an asshole. Okay. No, it's fine. It's fine. You I can was speak confused, to Deimos. but I okay. wasn't going to. Okay, well, no. If, if, if he pointed me to Udoth, then yeah, I would like to speak to Udoth. I apologize. Okay. I'm an asshole. All right. <laughs> I like the idea, though, that Deimos' statue is actually just always a rotating rat boy disguised <laughs> as a statue. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Mr. Mr. Udoth, I would like to. I would like to all that confession stuff. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I, ap- I apologize. No, it's all good. It's all good. It's okay. Deimos took that secret and he was just like, sure. <laughs> cool. I hear everything. <laughs> um, alrighty. The statue uh, does not respond to you. However, you do have this odd sensation that something did hear you. Okay. There's, there's just a sensation that your words have touched something. Well said, Eloy. I say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I hope. The I'm- statue now looks to you. I'm looking at Kelpie. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know what the best part is? Father, you're looking at Kelpie. He's looking at Udoth. Father Dorn kind of giggles to himself a little bit. Just, oh, this is rather delicious. <laughs> Two of the opposing gods having someone to speak to who work in tandem with each other. Huh? <laughs> Turn just barely noticing. Yeah. Uh, Father Dorn in, uh, tells you that Udoth and Kelpie are very opposed gods of each other. Well, oh boy, I didn't just make Kelpie mad, did I? I don't know, Kelpie, did Eloy make you mad? I look up at Kelpie and just like kind of tap fuck- it with my staff a little it's, bit. It's a fucking seahorse, dude. It does nothing. It's just looking at you with big bug old eyes. I know. Okay. It's all over my staff. Okay, guys, I think, I, I think I've done all I can do. I, I'm ready to go now. All right. Catch you later, <laughs> Kelpie. Tink. That- I, set, I set my staff back on the ground, just like start walking with it. All righty, so. Thank you, Mr. Father Dorn. Thank you, Mr. Riss. Thank you, Mr. Rudolph. Giant lion statue. <laughs> okay. I-, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. You got like a hunchback of Notre Dame moment <laughs> thing going. <laughs> Voiced by Jason Alexander. And the best part is that this is all happening in Eloy's head. You guys don't see shit. Um, Just like Quasimodo. God damn it. You brought Frollo into this. Fuck me. So, whenever you're swimming for the rest of the day, get a plus one to athletic checks. Sticking with Kelpie? And you? Whenever I'm I'm swimming in those monster-infested waters. For one one day, uh, difficult terrain has no effect on your speed. (laughs) Man, I need to find a god. You guys are getting blessings left and right. (laughs) Follow Deimos or something. I don't know. I've already got that vial of invisibility. Yeah, but that wasn't, I mean, that might have been from the god. (laughs) You don't know? (laughs) Nobody knows! Alrighty. So, what do you guys want to do now? Because you've just uh, walked out of the bank, you're all good to go, unless you want to get something in the Underdark. 
I mean, Nothing I mean, we me. uh, if we're, we're 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 leaving the temple now. We're close to the stingray. If anything. Oh right, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, is there anything else you would ever want to do? Do you want to go hang out with someone, say hello to someone, or try to seek out anyone before heading back to the stingray? Uh, I'm just going to be. I uh, I made it my plan for the night to kind of scope out Timothy. Yeah, agreed. All righty. Uh, do you have anything you want to do? I actually wanted to swing by the Gimme Brothers one more time because I just remembered something that I want to do. All righty. Uh, I mean, they're already working on that grenade launcher for us. Yeah, they've, they've got. Which some... I'm pretty sure we'll just give to Onslow because he'll <laughs> probably be the most useful with it. They've you, cool so stuff. you head back inside. You two head back to the Flappy Stingray, and yeah. we'll just go. I'll to catch Ezra up with you quick. guys later. I'm gonna, got... do, I'm gonna do a stealth check and just be like hidden in like the roof line somewhere, watching over Timothy. Let's see, that's yeah. Hey, while you're over there, ask him if things are going well on my portable piano, which I did not forget. <laughs> <laughs> you got look, it, Eli. look to the camera. <laughs> I got a it's just I was gonna bring it up, but then we were busy blackmailing him. <laughs> I, got, I, got a, I got a twenty-three on my stealth check. Yeah, you you keep a straight poker face. Like he's he's there. He's just like hanging out at like uh, Timothy's at the Flappy Stingray, just hanging out. He's actually like observing Haros's like crap table and just like playing with all the pieces. All right. Well, I'm just gonna be hidden outside, just keeping my eye on him and keeping eyes out for anything that might be tracking yeah so you plan to stay him. outside you're just like yeah you just you you find a good like spot a good like vantage on, point yeah a good vantage I can point see from there to his home yeah but you do notice that there are uh quite a few extra kanku lurking about on the rooftops yeah that's probably Deimos is doing <laughs> want to roll a perception check to see if that uh adds up uh, perception is wisdom. That would be 13. Yeah, from the last time you went down Black Street, you can notice that they're wearing the same robes. All right. Uh, you yeah, wanted I, to I, go to I the Gimme Brothers. Brothers. All right, so you head inside. You head inside. Uh, Pliskin is actually there, taking a look at some of the wares on the wall as well. Nice. They're they're currently busy assisting him with some uh some items. I just give, like, a friendly wave. Just finish up with Pliskin. Uh, my need is not urgent, but something I want to see if you guys can help me with. Well, you say that, they flinch at the moment you walk in the door. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 like, what, they're about to dive bomb <laughs> to assist you, but then you give them the assurance that, no, it's fine. Don't worry. As you were, gents. Uh, Plis uh, Pliskin just looks to you and goes, oh, I'm just kind of browsing around as well. If you have anything that's more dire, then by all means... All right, well, if that's the case. Uh, so I have one question that might be a little private, <laughs> maybe. Um, I basically pull them aside and show them the naval outfit that I still have with the gun hole in it. <laughs> Can you guys repair this? And if you have any know-how, uh, try and set it up to be the most highest-ranking naval <laughs> jacket you can. Hmm. They... Like you do have a description of uh, what's his face is. You have a descri You do have a base description of. Yeah, since I saw the the um, Victor's uh, yeah, outfit. Victor's. So I explained Victor's outfit. Can you make me like? Can you make it something like that? Roll me uh, persuasion, just so to see if you can get the image across to them. Sure. And I will roll an insight for them. You probably need Mithril, which we do have. I got eleven. They rolled a 19. You're having a little bit of a hard time describing, like, the subtle nuances. I don't know, it's, like, shiny or something. But, but yeah, but the... Gimme, give give like, just grabs a book off a shelf, like, flips it open, and shows you the exact uh, yeah, outfit. Yeah, that, that's, that's the one. That's, that's what I'm looking for. We something can, like that. We can make this. Pliskin actually, like, overhears this and looks to the side. Oh, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> that's kind of clever. Uh, so, yeah, if you can, if you can just kind of, like... Throw something together like that, just so I have, you know, some extra way to persuade persuade these navy folk. Uh, I would greatly appreciate it. Just wondering how much that would be, chaps. They they're kind of like mulling it over in their heads. Pliskin kind of walks over and just goes, "You know what would go really good with that? Is a navy standard flintlock pistol." <laughs> Pliskin, I knew I liked you. Yes, what the man says here. Uh, how much for a standard navy? Uh, Pistol as well. He actually flip. He takes the book from Gimme, flips through it, and shows them exactly. <laughs> I had two officers' pistols. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
but he actually he's showing like an admiral's one. Ah. He's showing like a really high grade looking one. It doesn't have to work, of course, but it fits the bill on yeah, disguise. Yeah, just, just something for them to see. Something I can flash when I'm walking by and being like, "Did you hear me, officer?" That kind of thing. Uh, if they're not, if you're not looking for authenticity, they'll say to you that the outfit itself, depending on how fast you want it to get done, that's going to cost you at base two hundred. 200 gold? Yep, and okay. for the pistol, for a fake version of the replica of the pistol, that'll be 50. Okay, so 250, it, they're saying that 200 is like the is the base, and it would I would have to pay more to get it faster? Yeah, the rush job okay. would probably bump it up to 500. Okay, um, I'm not in a huge hurry for this, this just sounds like it'll be useful for later. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and put me down for that. I think I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and throw 200 in there. That seems like it should be enough. I intimidate with... <laughs> <laughs> Six. <laughs> like even Plisk is just looking at you like. Why? It, 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 gim, gim, gimmick and Gimme are just looking at sitting there like, no, we said five hundred. Calling we, your bluff, Grant. Are you letting this happen? <laughs> no, they called it hard with a fucking twenty-five. <laughs> so. All right, that's fine. <laughs> So you're you, a, you drive a hard bargain, gimme bros, but I'll take it. Alrighty, so yeah, they'll uh they'll take the two fifty off your hand, and they said they can probably have it to you by no later than tomorrow night. Alright, folks. Well, thank you for the help. Uh, oh, one more thing. Uh my friend Eloy, he said that you had he had commissioned a traveling piano with you guys wanted to know what the progress report on that was oh yes uh one quick second and as far as i know it was already paid for in full so G gimmick kind of like looks to like the giant cannonball hole on the side of the room <laughs> ah there it is <laughs> he hands it to you it's in work it, it's in, in perfect condition it's a metal keyboard all right I'm guessing it's not like some huge thing that I'm having trouble carrying. No, you is. you can like bandolier this thing on your chest. Lovely. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> Eloy will be excited. I shake their hands and bid <laughs> bid them and Pliskin a good day. As you walk out, you hear Pliskin also start talking about how he's looking for something that can also deal damage but also protect him from magic as the door closes. I stand nearby just to hear more of this. Roll stealth. Nat 20. Ooh, hey. All right. I'm invisible, and I didn't yeah. even drink my potion. You pretty much just, like, sit, lean against the wall and start fiddling with the key tar, not even pressing <laughs> it. You overhear. Pliskin speak about something known as the call and something that could dwarf out audio magic. Okay. He doesn't quite understand what it is, and neither does anyone else know about it. Something that had to do with the disaster of the Gulf Stream. All right. Okay, this is audio magic and the Gulf Stream. Auditorial magic, Audit I apologize, yeah. Auditorial magic. He said it was involved in... The Gulf Stream incident. The Gulf Stream incident. All right. Sounds like a useful information. Uh, do you want to try and stick around a little bit longer, or do you want to uh, book out? I think I'll just start heading out. All right. Way. All right, so you all reconvene at the Flappy Stingray. I present Eloy with his new guitar. Oh, boy. I got so many different things to play now. I'm going to have to gonna have to play around with this. I... You, look, you out. look like a Swiss army knife of musical <laughs> instruments right now. Got my flute. Got my bagpipes. <laughs> got my got my centaur bongos. I'm just, boy, I'm just ready to go. <laughs> the one-man band, Eloy. I'm excited to see how you put all this together, buddy. I'm excited to see how you're going to hold all this shit together as well. I really hope we can make a contraption. This is like a... <laughs> I mean, you can go back to the Gimme Brothers and find some way to actually yeah. do that. Can you combine all of this into an outfit, boy. I mean, we can. <laughs> I mean, as it stands, I've I've been talking about putting a, a little shelf back there for all my props. <laughs> so you're 
you two kind of don't know where Wake is, but you're sitting up on the top of the roof, pretty much. I'm sitting on a roof that's giving me advantage of all the, all the places, yeah. So far, and roll perception on that. Uh, 16. You don't see any strange activity until down the street you notice that as it's getting late, there's a carriage coming towards the Flappy Stingray. I continue to monitor. <laughs> you and every other bird kind of giving the let me smash look at it. Uh. I'm going to fuck that carriage. <laughs> I got you, Blue. <laughs> hey, girl, you want some fuck? <laughs> I'm guessing that's what the birds do. No, the birds are the birds are kind of just like sitting there, just like ah. with their crossbows out. All right, I'm ready to jump in at a moment's notice. It's <clears throat> Mead. Oh, followed by Harrows. Followed in a by different carriage. No, the same carriage. Oh, okay. Followed by three other robed figures. One very tall and lanky. One large, and actually the cloak doesn't cover them. They're pretty much in, like, full plate armor. And then another small one, but it's actually a different robe, and it kind of only meets halfway. You look down and see that there's the frame of a woman, uh, but her skin kind of, like, almost blends in with the cobblestone. Almost like her skin is this weird azurite blue. All right, I feel like this is important. Boys, you got this? I look around at the birds. And girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume yes. I'm just they don't to... respond. You're talking to the followers of Demo, secrecy and qua <laughs> and stealth. They're not going to respond. <laughs> Until finally one of them just goes. <sighs> All right, I jump off the roof. I have soft fall. That's what I got it for. Jump off the... Okay, where are you landing off said roof? <laughs> I'm guessing on the street. <laughs> How high is this building? Okay, you... let, let's me, let me use my best judgment. How high am I? How high no, am no, I? No, no, I, I no. Just, I just want you to roll athletics for me. Okay. Athletics. Wait, you mean acrobatics, right? This would be a roll? Yeah. All right, that would be a 22. Okay, yeah, you Superman punch in the street, but no one's the wiser. <laughs> Hero landing. <laughs> Let me roll to see if any of them notice you. That one! Good job, Haros. <laughs> oh. Someone got ya. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, fuck yeah. The big paladin-looking one kind of turns his head towards you. You're looking at, like, a man who's just straight-up Johnny Dark Souls right now. <laughs> Full plate, light blue. His outfit is really strikingly similar to something you've seen before. There's a lot of decorations and covered in mithril. That's navy. Oh, mm. no. I narrow my eyes. <sighs> Harrow's kind of, like... Like, the the big guy in armor kind of just, like, nudges Naros and turns and points to you. He looks back. No, it's fine. He's with us. And you're with them? We've come to parlay. You want to step inside so we can explain it more? We kind of asked everyone who's involved in this incident to be here. That's fair. I think I have quite a bit of information you'd enjoy having. I mean, I'm not, but I would just love the idea of them opening the door and... Ezra's just a couple drinks in. And then we blow the whole thing sky up! <laughs> it's amazing! <laughs> I preface it with that is not happening. <laughs> just but a just funny what if. The comedian in me <laughs> wishes it was. <laughs> so you follow them inside? Yeah, I walk in with them. Alrighty, after a few minutes have passed by, uh, Mary is kind of like okay with the fact that Mead and Harros have come back. They take a few sips of drink, they have some grog on the house. Uh, the three others sit at their own table, like just waiting and watching everyone around them. You, everyone now gets, like, a little bit of a descriptor of what they look like, but Ezra, you could just straight up tell a lot of these boys are not hidden in the fact that they're wearing naval armor. They're not low-ranking officers either. They're these, pretty these, highly decorated. These are pretty real-deal fellas. I'm glad I left all of my military <laughs> swindled gear in my trunk. <laughs> Mine's still in my bag, but I'm not flashing it around. Or wait, no, I handed it off to them, so never mind. I don't have anything on me either. Onslow comes in, followed by Ziaka uh, coming downstairs. 
Uh, Pliskin follows in, Skrung follows in, and then Red follows da- uh, coming downstairs. And I'm guessing Nedra's just been with us this whole time. Nedra's just been, Nedra's sitting there with Timothy, like, playing with the chips as well. Just, like, she Good. takes the chips and just goes, <laughs> Do you hear the noise this thing makes? It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Haros. Haros, that's Nedra. <laughs> What? Okay. First of all, that's strange that no one chartered the fact that there's another tiefling girl here. That's kind of frightening in multiple ways than what you think I'm meaning. Yeah, well, we just kind of stumbled upon her, so. What do you mean stumbled upon her? Where'd she come from? Well, she was the champion at that uh, fine day boardwalk company. They smuggled a tiefling in here?! Christ, she looks like a pit fiend! Well, it doesn't belong to them now. What do you mean? I mean, I broke their contract and now she's with us. Mead looks to you. You broke a contract with Nyth? I not so much broke as... I mean, un- t- t- tore. <laughs> physically. <laughs> it, I mean, we ended up paying, I guess, but... He paid more. Mead looks furious at you right now. Mead is just... <laughs> oh, good. Look, that's a problem for another day, and I'll deal with that. Yes, it is quite the problem for another day, and we will shelf it for later. But for right now, we have some esteemed guests who I'd like to introduce you to. All right, then. Finally, Risp is the last one in, and the door shut. The lights go off, leaving one candlelight open. The shutter windows are closed. Rattles is there, too. He just, like, <laughs> oh, showed <wow>. up. <laughs> Whoa! Hey! Yeah, there's now a skeleton standing in the corner. Hi, Mr. Rattles. Hello. You, you don't know how we got in here. He just, like, I... blinked into existence. Further assuming that he's an illusion. <laughs> I don't say that. <laughs> Fuck me, I'm gonna have to do something <laughs> later. I'm gonna have to do something later with you. A question of in any in any that, case that net one's gonna haunt you for a while. Yep. So everyone kind of gathers all together, like Harrow's kinda of like pulls a bunch of tables together, gives everyone food and drink. I'm going to roll perception. I just want to like make sure, like basically sizing everybody up, sizing like checking everything. I've got dark vision, so I can see better at, yep. in the darkness than most. Just in case anything foul is afoot. Oh, uh, with my uh, sixteen. No one seems to be hiding anything. The three hooded figures kind of are all just waiting for this all to get started and everyone to sit down. They're all observing. You see the complexion in a, a cup in the tall, slender one. Mm-hmm. It's of a female frame, and her skin is almost kind of like this amber gold as she turns her chin. And you see the points in her hood. She's obviously an elf. Okay. The other one, who I was describing to you before... The paladin? The paladin, well, you just can't see his face okay, altogether. He's, he's, he, just, he's, he's just a train. He's a train yeah. in armor. <laughs> but the other one, the fe- the other female, uh, she's wearing, like, this weird veil that almost kind of looks like you're looking at the surface of water that's covering her. And you can't really describe it, but just by looking at her alone, you feel like there's a layer of water washing over your body, but it physically is not. And that's for anyone who gazes upon her. It feels comforting to me. But like you, like the rest of you, and pardon me, because the chat's going to fucking lose its mind when I say this word. You have this damp, moist feeling on your skin. (laughs) But it's not like distraught. It's not distraughting. It's like you're running your hand through like a faucet, like a gentle like wave of water coming from a faucet. Not clammy, just. Not clammy, it's just, it's that feeling. Okay. The the wo- the woman sees you doing that, <laughs> and she's at, she like looks over. You don't see her face, but you can physically see her giggling at that. Did Ezra? Did she put a hex on me? Probably. 
but I think she put it on all of us. <laughs> that doesn't make it better, Ezra. <laughs> Wasn't thinking it would. Okay. Just, just letting you know you're I'm not alone. I'm curious about this woman, but I'll, I'll let that be until the communications start. All right, everyone sits down. Uh, the three are sitting at the forefront. However, me kind of stands up and looks to you all. I'd like to thank you all for your efforts in this entire debacle. A lot of you have given us proper information and a lot of insight as to what's been happening. Unfortunately, even with the information you have given us, there was not a lot to go on in actually finding the man. We do know that he's no longer on the Northern Islands, but we still don't have that much of a trail. That's why I brought these three in here. We parlayed with the naval crew that you all have encountered with. What are you talking about? I don't recall an encounter. Please stop, Wake. They know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I was afraid I was going to have to try and lie about that. They are fully aware. How fully? <laughs> Shh. <laughs> the, gold, the golden amber-skinned elf kind of just, like, draws her hood down. And cue image! Oh! Dun, dun, dun. There she is! <laughs> Look at that, we're all prepared this time. Wow! I can see the back of her head. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you can uncue image. <laughs> she kind of pulls her hood down. I know, Mr. Lockwood. I know quite well. I knew- What'd you do?! <laughs> <laughs> Don't you pin this on- <laughs> Mead was- very kind in paying off the damages you've done to the campsite and towards my men. I just kind of sink in my chair. <laughs> mm-hmm. She's looking to you two. She doesn't give a fuck about Eloy right now. <laughs> Eloy is fine with this. Eloy is keeping his mouth shut. <laughs> but in any case, I suppose we should introduce ourselves. I am Captain Availo Ishtali. All right, that that makes sense. It's nice to finally put a face with the name. And these are my associates. She points to the to the large hulking knight man. Let me uh, go ahead and get these names right so I'm not fucking this up. This is Troy Hulch, my captain of the guard. Troy Hulch. That sounds like <clears throat> a hulking man. <laughs> and this is Arohadi. The woman kind of like takes her hands Your hottie? up. Arohadi. Arohadi. Okay. She takes her hands up. Her skin looks like a precious metal. It looks like Azerite. She pulls it apart, and she, like, shows that she looks like she's an elf, but based on her skin alone, there's no way in God's green earth she is a normal elf. If any of you would like to roll knowledge history with disadvantage... I mean, I'll roll anything. <laughs> I will, too. Six. <laughs> nope. Da. Ah! I had a 19, and then the other one was a 2, so never mind. Unfortunately, you guys are unable to discern what she is, but she's not an elf, but she clearly looks like the make of one. She's wearing a really flowy gown uh, that almost looks like a clerical sort of, like, outfit. But the rest of her clothing is otherworldly. She is not from this continent whatsoever. She almost looks like she's dressed in, like, a desert attire. Hey, Ezra, how come she looks like a normal elf and you look like a weird one? That's a normal elf? Uh, based on my nat one. <laughs> <laughs> she is of fey descent, yes, but she is not of this country, nor is she of this plane. She is a, she is a djinn born. What's oh, a djinn born? I get a powerful headache if I drink too much djinn born. <laughs> prove that the first night. <laughs> I'll save you the trouble, friend. Ten. She she looks she just like looks to you with like this gi born. giant mischievous smirk. It kind of like almost goes up, almost like Nedra. I'll save you the trouble, friend. She kind of like snaps her fingers and like her body kind of like congeals into water from her hand down. I'm the I'm the machinations of a genie. Oh. I'm sorry, I don't know if this is offensive. Do you No, grant I wishes? do not. No, sweetheart, <laughs> I don't grant wishes. Okay. I don't have that power. I just had to ask. She, like, snaps her fingers and her hand returns back to its weird Azerite's colored self. Wake is perplexed by this. <laughs> you look like you have questions. 
I, spe I speak in Aquan directly at her to see if she <laughs> understands it. Are are you made of elements? What did it say to me? Okay, good. That answers that question. No idea. <laughs> he does that sometimes. <laughs> kind of sounds like what happens when you poke a bloater fish. A little. As I've noticed. Watch one waddle on the windowsill. <laughs> <laughs> Who brought that back? <laughs> they just... Sh Harris just looks around. And they just show up. <laughs> kind of blow in the wind? They just, they, they just show up. It's you really can't kill them. really far inland for one of those. <laughs> I mean, we are on the other port. I mean, I guess. They, You're near the port. The land. Okay, I thought we were deeper in. <laughs> from the so town. Avelo kind of like looks to the rest of you. So allow me to explain. We have come here under the discussion of parlay with your Captain Mead. Our quarrel was not with finding him as much as he believed it as such. Our quarrel was finding the one you know as Victor. Is, does he go by another name? No, that is his correct name. Okay. <laughs> However, he does have a surname. Victor Balarsk. Balarsk? Yep. B-A hyphen L-A-R-S-K. That's almost how I spelled it. Balarsk. It is of my intent that we find him and capture him. I'd like to bring him alive. However, I would like to see him die before my eyes for the accounts of the egregiousness he's done upon the Navy. I suppose that does garter some explanation. A little. Very well. She will start to explain to you. Let me just go through my notes real quick. Uh, she has a personal vendetta against him. She came to the island seeking him uh, as he was a medical officer on the Seagriff which was what Ave Lo's brother was the captain of. I have to just double check and see if I wrote his name like, a, like an asshole. Oh, there he is. Yep. Volo Ishtali was the name of her brother. <laughs> Why does Victor. that name sound familiar? I can't. Like, which, I, I swear I've heard that name before. Which name? Valo Ishtali. Yeah, it'll come back to me. Mm. If it is, it's probably purely coincidental. Okay, has not been mentioned <laughs> in the campaign. No, you're, you're, it, I'm, I'm more than certain I'm probably going to get a few people telling me, oh, this from, oh, are you thinking Tally from Mass Effect 3? Don't, no, <laughs> that, was not my, that was not my case, but I'm so far Tally? into this story that that's not going to change anytime soon. <laughs> All right. She explain. Uh, she then, like, like kind of like scratches her head a little bit, just like she really doesn't want to explain this, but she's like biting through thinking about this. Victor was a medical officer on the Sea Grift, very highly decorated uh, within the naval ranks. Tell me, what do you know of True Resurrection? Well, I know it's possible to resurrect people. I know the undead don't exist, but. Like, to bring someone back... Like, Hi, Mr. Rattles! <laughs> Hi, Eloy. <laughs> <laughs> like, to bring someone back to life from, uh, like, bring their soul back into their body, I've heard it can be done. It can be done, but there are very few in this world who possess that ability. And some of them happen to be very high-ranking officials in the Navy. Victor thought... Uh, Victor believed that there was a way that we could harness abyssal energy and recycle it back into pure arcane, what it originally was. It's like a magic recycling. Indeed. Unfortunately, the only way he was able to make any breakthroughs was this, was taking prisoners, of the, uh, prisoners to the Navy and using them in his experiments. He was that high in the ranks that he was able to secure these prisoners. This went on for a few years on my brother's ship, he was not very fond of this. How long ago was this? About 15 years ago. Wake gets very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in, the na uh, in the Navy, albeit the entire world, there are only very few in this world that actually know how to properly uh, bring someone back to life. 
However, she was given the information as she was part of this investigation. The only way you could bring someone back to life is if you had, if you had the capabilities, the magical capabilities to do so. However, the soul must be willing. The soul, uh, the soul must be willing. You must have a piece of, like, an article of the creature that you want to bring back. And they must not pass with any, like, malicious intent in them. Or any sort of, like, feelings that would distraught the process. Bringing someone back with, like, say, if they knew they were murdered or if they knew this was a wrong or they had regrets in their life. That when they come back, they would come back as wraiths rather than actually coming back in their true form. Okay. So, uh, apparently, Victor was very close to a breakthrough in actually learning how to recycle Abyssal into Arcane, but he needed a new soul, and we were he was out of his supply for that month. So, that night, when we were at dinner, uh, when he was at dinner with my brother. He poisoned his drink and put him into a sleep-like state that actually killed him peacefully, believing that this would be the ca uh, believing that this would be the case to actually solve the recycle problem. It instead made the abyssal energy far more erratic and summoned an abyssal creature to destroy the Seagriff. We all thought everyone was dead. Unfortunately, it seems that Victor found a way to survive and came to this island. That's where we are now. We agree to assist you in finding this man. And in return, we will not explain to the Navy that this port houses a pirate. However, this also means that Mr. Meade will have to abide to his part of the parlay. I, that's right. I'll pull myself out of retirement and leave this town. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Where, okay. where would you be going? Back on the open seas, I guess. Ave Lo here was very gracious in giving me a five-day head start before they gave chase. Well, this seems rough. What's this place going to do without you? We have replacements. This will be seen as a port town. I know plenty who are capable of taking up the mantle as mayor. He looks to Abigail. Abigail's kind of just, like, shocked at this. She's looking at Ave and her crew, like, just with, like, the fucking most Staring darting of eyes. Daggers. Anyone he like, Mary, Haros, and Abigail are all looking at her like they just want to take out the pistol and end it now. I mean, is that an option? <laughs> <laughs> Mead it's looks to the... Re no, Mead Amazing. looks to the rest of them and goes, but I assured Ave that that is not how my crew works. We do not <laughs> kill. I stand by my code, and I will see to it that this town remains safe by becoming a pirate once more. Well, okay. All right, then. However, this does lead us to the fact that I see that you've had a few extra friends hovering the rooftops. Yeah, we... Uh... We heard that Victor has been abducting people from town, and we might know his next target. I uh, signal for Timothy to come over, as well as Nedra. He's eating poker chips as he walks over. Hey, come on. <laughs> uh, Timothy, Nedra, would you mind showing them the uh, scar that the man gave you? They lift up their arms, and they show the uh, rot underneath them. Ave kind of, like, stands up and looks at them. She goes to actually try and reach to see the scar closer, but then she realizes, wait, I'm getting close to an ogre's pit. That's a stupid <laughs> idea. She kind of just, like, stands up, but then, like, holds her arms back behind her and starts observing it. Yes, this is indeed Victor's work. He was capable of actually summoning necrotic magics from the inside out. Is the charming fellow. Is there a way we can make that better? That's really icky. She looks over to the paladin. The paladin stands up. You just hear, like, metal creaking as he stands. He takes his hand and touches it to Nedra's arm. Kind of, like, grasps it. She's just like, is this a fight? Is this a fight? Do I punch him? <laughs> no, 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 it's no, okay, no. Nedra. It's okay. 
you watch as like the black scarring disappears, and what re what returns is normal flesh. Huh. Well, that's and he useful. does the same to Wait, Timothy. I'd say before you do it to Timothy, if uh, if he is in fact targeting Timothy, this is our best chance at maybe drawing him out. If he sees something's up, if he got healed, he might notice something's off. The paladin kind of like smiles a bit and taking a piece of the rotting flesh off Timothy. He like pulls the piece off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hands it off to the gin. And she puts it in water and starts like shaking it around in a small glass. <laughs> I believe I have a trail now. Oh. Oh. Well, that you watch as like the water inside of it turns into a small little you watch as it turns into a small little translucent uh, cup. Like, like you see the translucency in the water turn from black to like almost like a picture of the northern island itself. You're seeing a small rowboat off the coast just north of where you just south of where you guys are. And she didn't even have to roll to make that happen. It's like she's scrying or something. <laughs> well, he's no longer on the northern island. She puts the cup down. Which means he might be on the southern island. It looks like it. Aye, right, this is good news, Mead says. In that case, I know Mrs. Tolly here is very eager to find this man. And we would like to keep to our agreement as much as possible to show goodwill. However, I don't wish to open the porch just yet to allow you ferry passage. Grammy? You see Grammy off on the side. <laughs> She's by the window. You told him. <laughs> I said nothing. You, everyone looks to the window that you're looking at. There's nothing there. Ignore me. So, rather than give you a ferry passage, we're going to make this a short expedition. Since you three were the most capable of getting some information, are going to head on down to the island as well. You're going to take a small... You're, you're both going to take two small boats, enough to fit four people across. I'd like you two to decide who else you'd like to take along. Well, Ziaka actually has business down in the southern island, so I think we need to take her. I look over to Nedra and say, Nedra, would you like to stay here and play with Timothy? I get to have fun times? I mean, as fun as Timothy's willing to have. <laughs> I mean, those, those, I think he really likes the taste of those. They look really good. Can I have one? <laughs> Haros is like, no, you can't have one. How much do they cost, Haros? <laughs> I made those. How much do they cost to make, Haros? <laughs> they don't cost anything. Well, then why can't you have one? <laughs> because I made them by myself. And they have sentimental value. Fair enough. Nedra, <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure how to... You have no idea how much I want to take this imbecile by the back of the neck and throw him out the door! <laughs> Easy, Haros. We won't make friends talking so rashly. And you lot don't have to decide this right now. I'm going to have you leave early in the morning. So for now, you may rest... Have water, have uh, have water, have food, and uh, speak tactics if you wish. All right. Excuse me, Mr. Tr Troy Hutch, was that it? The the suit just turns to you. <laughs> that that thing you did with with their arms. I noticed. I got this flute right, and when I bandage up somebody, what's got a busted leg, and I play the flute over it, I've noticed that they heal real good. Is that? But I never did nothing like what you just did just there. Is that something that anybody can learn to do? Or is that on account of you're made of a metal man? <laughs> he, like, turns to Ave. <sighs> turns back to you. This is from the power of my god. Which god is that? This is of the power of Ludarius. Father of sun and light. 
<laughs> Praise the sun, goddammit. <laughs> Let the sun shine. <laughs> All right, I'll think on that. Thank you, sir. What are his thoughts on jolly cooperation? <laughs> I mean, he's being forced to do it with a bunch of pirates. <laughs> so... Uh, with that, you all, unless you guys have any questions you want to ask uh, your new compatriots, you guys will have the night to rest up and decide who you want to bring along. Are they just sticking around the Flappy Stingray, or are they like, Yeah, right, they, they've the decided that it'd be best if they don't go outside. Okay. That's why you guys are going to leave super early in the morning before anyone gets up to go to work. Okay. Uh, I want to try and stealthily pull uh, Ave Lo aside. Can I just, like, kind of get her attention, but without alerting everyone else? Well, at, by this time, you guys have finished your meal. Okay. Uh, it's been, like, an hour and a half has passed by. Ave and her crew are all just sitting at the table together, still sizing up everyone in the room. Okay. She's just looking at everyone with, like, a blank, like, just sneer. Not really, like, giving a lot of people the proper respect they deserve just by looking at her. Yeah. She's typical, like, I'm better than you elf looking right now at everyone. Gotcha. She Wait. turns to you as you walk up to her. May we help you? Yeah, there's something I want to ask you about. And uh, if you don't mind, I would like to keep it between us. Roll persuasion. Uh, not great. Uh, five. You may speak while my companions are beside me. The thing is, I hear there's a Lockwood in the Navy. I've been spending the better part of my life looking for, I believe, this Lockwood. I'd like to know if there's any information you could give me on them. What is your intent on finding this Lockwood? This Lockwood came into my life and ruined it. I have no intentions of killing this man or doing him any bodily harm. But I'm not going to let him get away with it. Are you lying, or are you telling the truth? I'm telling the truth. I do not intend any bodily harm or murder. All right. She can hear the deepness of your voice, like, go from <laughs> the jovial. The serious. Yeah, the serious All of a sudden, in. this goofy, sarcastic guy at the table is like, nah, man, let's get fucking real. <laughs> you know, let, let's rap talk for a second. You're looking for this I man. I just turned that chair backwards. <laughs> I dare say you're going to have a very difficult time in finding this man, as it is, he is the Admiral. Okay. I know where he is. However, getting to him, unfortunately, you'd have to be in the Navy. All right. Well, thank you. I tell you what. Prove your colors and merit in this expedition of ours, and I may help you just yet. You seem like the only tangible fellow out of your crew that would understand matters as such. Use that half-elf to your advantage, my dude! <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Cap. I, uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate you being able to willingly share this information with me, and I promise you, I will prove my merit. I just kind of... Nod and <laughs> go on my way. She nods. Clearly, as well. I am uncomfortable talking about this, especially with strangers. Yeah, no, she. So that's pretty much what that went down to: is prove your worth and help her out in this, and she might give you a little bit of a hand as well. All right. Wakes just off on his own, like sit, sitting kind of in a corner, just playing on his harp, the same little song he always kind of plays. The only people you're noticing that, like, are having a big problem with this, like, with these naval officers here, aside from Meade's crew, the only people you got looking with leery eyes is Pliskin and Riss. They kind of have been sitting off on the side, kind of, like, looking back at the three naval officers before looking back to each other in conversation. Hey, Riss. She, he, like, jumps up and then turns and looks to you. Oh, yes. Hello, Eloy. Did you see what that metal man did with his hands? Oh, you mean lay on hands? 
Yeah, yeah. I guess. <laughs> Sounds so stupid when you say it in universe. Yep, in, it's not in universe, but I'm just you like, mean you know laying what? laying on them hands? Lay on hands. No. Ham bone in that poor he, necrotic, <laughs> necrotic victim. <laughs> he goes, oh yes, he channeled his he channeled his uh, prayers to his god and was able to bless Nedra. I... I never seen nothing like that in my whole life. Back home, we really only have one prayer, which is don't kill us with rock slides. <laughs> and even that one doesn't usually work. I, I never know that a god could help you do good things. Well, of course they can. It, <laughs> depe <my> <laughs> I, it depends on who you wish to pray towards and what they clearly ask of you in return. And they grant you... And uh, to those who are very devout to the cause of their gods are normally given... The ability to channel their energies. That's sort of what I'm capable of. You can do that too? Holy shit! <laughs> I mean, yes, I could demonstrate for you. Takes up a small butter knife. Watches the blood falls down. That's a sharp butter knife. I was going to say, that's, <laughs> that's what I'm going to No, he like dug it in though. <laughs> Ow. Yeah, you, like, you watch his like, eyes like go. <sighs> he stabbed himself with a spoon. It's like Naruto it's clean. biting through his thumb. Yeah. Which god let you do that? Well, I pr kind of pray to every single one, so unfortunately I have no clue who my powers come from. Huh. You say they ask something of you to, to let you do that. Yes, I am rather devote to every single god. I'm very interested in all of them. So, do they do that like, like you live at the temple and you like help them out there? Is that why they let you do that? I... I pray to them. I try to perform as many rituals and as many sort of offerings as each god demands of. Within reason, of course, I am only but one person. All right. And there's only so much time in the day that I could devote myself to every single god. I'll, I'll think on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Do you, do you wish to devote yourself to one? I... I don't know. I, I surely would love to help people and, and, and make them feel better when they're sick, but... You see Plisky kind of like hold his eyes like, Oh, God, don't get him started. He'll never <laughs> shut up about it for eons now, Eloy, please. Missionary mode. <laughs> you, you just watch as Riff's ears perk up as he's like... He went from somber looking over <laughs> at the, the naval officers to like, Someone wants to know? <laughs> I mean... Like that... I don't know, that... That, that light god seemed real nice, but boy, that, that middle man, I mean, he acted nice enough, but boy, he's sure scary. Who's, who's the least scary god, would you reckon? <laughs> well, just the nicest and the friendliest. He looks, over to, he looks over to Troy, then looks back to you. We can't speak of how a person can channel their god or how their personality can alter it, but he clearly is devoted that he's capable of doing such magic. No, imagining Eloy starting like a Christian rock band. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Faith plus one. <laughs> Old lady big band, no no awesome. his band name is Old Lady Big Rock Mountain. <laughs> now he's scared of her. He doesn't. <laughs> but Faith plus one is a sick Christian band name. If you you guys out there, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> South oh, Park? I, yeah, I stole oh, it from it? South oh, Park. It's a South Park joke. <laughs> okay, well, shit. Then never mind. I guess South Park. I mean, it works. Well, it works I could, as a, it works I, as a D &D I, I don't. I don't quite know if I could discern which one is nice, but depending on the domain they uh, govern, I could list off those to you and see which one you find the most fancy. I mean, I'm really no offense to anyone else who's listening, but I'm I'm really just mostly interested in helping out people. What's what's sick or hurt? Well, there is. Father of the Sun and Light, Ludarius. There is Elixir, the grafter of life and health. Oh. This may, this may sound strange, but there's also Vecker, the watcher of death and pain. Oh boy, <laughs> I, I would like to watch as little of that as possible. <laughs> Without pain, there is not knowing that we are living. It may sound gruesome, I know, but it is something to keep in the realm of possibility. I, I, will, I will think on. that Boy, that's a powerful lot to think on. I'm well, if you don't feel like you wish to speak to a god that 
of those who can oppose of each other, there are neutral ones. Oh, I, I like that. I don't like making anybody mad if well, I can help it. Well, the Elder Gods that are neutral towards each other, I know that some of the neutral gods as acolytes are actually still walking amongst us. I haven't heard of where they're walking about currently, but there is Zuhan, the Wanderer of Balance and Neutrality. Ooh, I hear you don't mess with him. <laughs> God. God damn it, Eloy. <laughs> Fuck me, I don't want to read these anymore. I hate, I hate my Pantheon, god damn it. All the gods, damn it. <laughs> There's Pan, the grafter of creativity and muse. Ooh. Hey. That sounds neat. What's he like? Well, do you know of what a satyr is? I mean, you look part of one. Ooh, I, I, I think I've heard stories about them. Get advantage. <laughs> mm. Yeah, let's get, it, get advantage. I'll take advantage. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. much better. Okay. You you know of satyrs. They've lived on mountains before. You've seen them travel as like wanderers. They're pretty much the goat people. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I know those guys. They're 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 like they're like half a centaur, but more so than most folks because they're because <laughs> their legs is furry. <laughs> well, yes, Pan is depicted as a grand uh, a grand satyr. And didn't they, don't they have a, a, a thing what's like, what's like my flute, but like five of them running all together? His followers do carry around symbols of those. Ooh. There's also Schrodinger, the unending of time and fate. There's also Heldrum, the embellisher of profit and fortune. And of course, Deimos, and I know you're very well attuned with him. I do, he's been real nice to me, but boy, is he spooky. What we don't understand can also be our greatest power. All right, I'll, I'll I'll think on all that, boy. I, I I like the idea of a god that's just that's just nice and dancing around with a flute. Like, boy, that sounds that sounds way nicer than any other god I ever heard of. I don't under, I don't know if this might be possible, but it would. I actually think it would be enlightening for you if you could find out where his acolyte is. You got you got any idea where whereabouts he might be? Unfortunately, no. It's Sadly, out of my realm, I have not heard of any news of acolytes within La Saranus for quite some time. But I do know that Pan's son actually does travel around a lot. Ooh. Well, I mean, that's... that's oh, that's right. You don't know about the acolytes, do you? I don't think so. The acolytes are actually either embodiments or offspring of the gods that walk around and speak as their voice. Really? So there you go, Lord Drop. Yeah, Lord there, Drop. There are God's there kids. Are demigods. So, yep, there are demigods. God's kids. <laughs> huh. Boy, I think I got something to ask around about when I when I start up my travels again once we take care of this lockdown. You do seem very interested in Pan. I could offer you his symbol. All right, what's that like? He reaches into his like little coat and pulls out a small golden pin that looks like a pan flute. Yeah, that, that looks real nice. Sure. I can offer this for you for 100 gold. Oh. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I got... How many is that? I count them out 100 gold. He hands it to you. You now have a holy symbol of Pan. I'm just learning all kinds of things today. I think Risk just fleeced him. <laughs> Magic isn't necessarily evil, and, and... This is a big day for Eloy. Oh, boy. Breaking down a lot of walls. I'm gonna have to sleep on this. <laughs> uh, so, do you guys want to do anything else, or are we done for the night? Oh uh, well, oh, there I is have... there is still the issue of deciding who you want to bring along. You can bring up to two more people. So you wanted Ziaka as one. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm voting Ziaka as one. Um, yeah, we are. Out of everyone else you have in the party. All right, I have sort of taken responsibility for Nedra, so bringing her along kind of makes sense. Yeah. Jeez. Unless you guys have any other thoughts about that. However, Ezra, I'd like you to make a perception check real quick. It seems there might be someone extra in this little gathering. Oh, goody. <laughs> uh, I have a 16. There is someone sitting at the craps table since everyone came in here. Someone who's just been there the whole time? He's just been there sitting the whole time. 
kind of just like rolling the dice. He's actually playing with Timothy right now. All right. Who uh, do I recognize this person? He's kind of stout. He re the size recognizes you of someone. Uh, is it that dwarf guy that he f <laughs> totally beat? <laughs> If you could see that giant fucking, uh, <laughs> you see that giant mohawk going into his <laughs> and mutton chops into beard combo, then boy howdy, that's Gopher. Well, well, well. Ah, well, well, well indeed. Have, have nice you, of you to drop by again. Have you just been hanging out this whole time? Of course I have. I come here all the time to do some gambling. But unfortunately, it looks like this whole place kind of fell dead with all the seriousness and whatnot. Yeah, I don't think the uh, the room's into playing games. Not that well, I mean, this fella is. He put down quite some cash on it. I look over at Timothy. He, like, holds up his wallet and pours gold on the table. <sighs> well, I guess it's your lucky... This is my allowance. <laughs> well, I guess it's your lucky day, golfer. Considering Wake doesn't seem to want to play and rob you blind again. Ah, uh, it's okay. I don't blame him. <laughs> it's all in the game. Well, anyway, I guess, uh, have fun with your game. Well, not so fast. I hear you all are going to the South Island. What he, if old Gopher wants to get in on that, too? Well, I mean, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't think I'd be giving away my map without at least knowing where it is and how it got there in the first <laughs> place, now did you? You know, I'm a carpenter by trade, and I do like the prospect of finding me some pieces of a novelty ship. And that uh, seems like what I gave on that map there. Seems I might have a traveling partner in figuring it out for myself. Hey, Wake! We have another volunteer! Who? <laughs> Remember this fella? <laughs> he, like, takes his pipe and just goes, Barely. <laughs> Uh, oh, don't be like, I was really drunk. Oh, don't be like you that. You swindled me good. Money. Let's let's face it. You got me good. I I did indeed. <laughs> I, I, I got no... your map too. Yeah, don't worry about it. I had like four copies. Also, I got that uh, holy symbol that you stole from her people. I point over at Tiaka. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, uh, that might make this a bit <laughs> awkward. Maybe, uh, maybe traveling you with you is out of the question if we're gonna bring Siaka. And uh, look, I'm sure you're a nice guy and everything off the craps table, but uh, she got here first. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. See, uh, kind of noticed that nice little trinket you got in your finger there. Yeah. I got one myself. Holds out a bag and it has a mouth on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another mimic collector. Hey, Kevin, you know that one? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sam. Hello. <laughs> His name is Sam. How'd you oh, know Yeldon? Oh, there's a bunch of them. Oh, I've been traveling around trying to find all the pieces that Yeldon did for himself. You My, see, uh, I'm heading for the mother load. Apparently, he came on a mimic ship to this island. And, and I'm quite interested in that. And this map might be the answer to that when I take it. Oh, yes. I just didn't want to go down to the South Islands alone. I mean... We all know about the gnolls and the, the snakes, of course. Well, thanks for the map. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate your quest to fill out your mimi decks, but uh, I'm starting to think our our crew is getting a little a, a little crowded here. Again, I appreciate the help, but being being told that we can you know we have to we have to travel light, bringing in someone who we have. That's no. why I sold that information off a little bit early. Uh, and we, I know the shortcut to getting to that mimic ship. Oh, that motherfucker. <sighs> See, that's Wait, the, how would that's people have gotten to the island? That's the information you lead with. Also, good question. <laughs> why would the entire I? place has been on lockdown. <laughs> Gopher has ways. Then how are you not there already? Yeah, what do you need us for? <laughs> I fear they're probably dead by now, but I do know a shortcut. Doesn't seem to bode well for us if we want to travel with them. <laughs> that I sounded mean, like there's... a big good news, everyone, to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's treasure in it. Well, obviously, as dashing young men like yourself, there's treasure in it for you, and you kind of have the, quite the collection of mimics you got there. I mean, don't you want to find out what else there is? I don't know. What do you think, Wake? I, 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 I see the advantages of bringing him, but... We've got a crew of people that we sort of know what they can do. 
You don't have to bring old gopher along. I'm just giving you the option. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm aware, and thank you for your volunteering, gopher. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, I say we... He's been sneaking away out of this lockdown. I say we tattle on him to Captain Me. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> now, that'd be cute, but you can't prove it was me. You can't I mean, prove it was old gopher. Wait, we have a bit of a confession out of you. <laughs> well... I have other people do my dirty work for me. <laughs> yeah, like us, if we was <laughs> idiots. Well, that's why that's I offered... That's coming from Eloy. Wow. That, that's why I offered to come along, you dumbass. <laughs> that oh, that works on multi-level. Yeah, oh. there you go. <laughs> a multi Yeah, he like, he like looks to you. That's why I offered to go along with you, you dumbass. <sighs> I mean, we are traveling somewhere that, as far as I know, other than Ziaka, the rest of this group isn't super familiar with. How often have you been to the South Islands? <laughs> hey, Riss! <laughs> you want to come with us? <laughs> Old Gopher's been there, I want to say. <laughs> about five times. Insight, I want to see if he's telling the truth. I know shit. <laughs> I got a 18. All right, yeah, yours beats the crap out of mine. He's been there way more than that. <laughs> Seems like a conservative bet. Hmm. He knows a lot more than he leads on. All right, you know what? What's that mimic bag of yours do? What was your name again? It's Sam. God, I can remember that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I just called him Bag for the longest time. What's Sam do? Takes copper. Oh, I like where this is going. Pops out silver. He turned that orange gold into gray gold. <laughs> yes, he did. He <laughs> <laughs> what happens if you give it silver? Gold. <laughs> you we give it gold. Now it's gold gold. Fortunately, this little guy only has a little bit of juice in him a day. This is... Dear Lord. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's impressive, but I can make more gold than that in a day just by betting on you at the Coliseum there. <laughs> that's ah! a good point. Or by playing this guy at that table. <laughs> gold! <laughs> Sick burn. <laughs> Biting his pipe a little bit. <laughs> Come on, Golfer. You know you gotta just deal with that if you're gonna come along. <laughs> Are you sure you want to? No, volunteer? no, Golfer's just like, oh, you're right. <laughs> you got me good. It's fair. He he honestly <laughs> doesn't look. He looks like he's here to con you, but he's not showing ill will to the fact that you got him. <laughs> All's fair in the game of gambling to Golfer. I mean, he, I, I caught him cheating. I feel like he doesn't really have a leg to stand on him. No, no, he doesn't, and he's completely okay with this. <laughs> he, dude. He's a con artist, and he wants you to know he is one. <laughs> he's, he's trying to do that game recognize game thing, <laughs> yeah. actually. I appreciate the offer, but aside from letting us know of shortcuts and everything like that, what do you have to offer to this military strategic party? <laughs> Nedra's powerful good at punching is my, my only thing. Holds out a, he, show, he like pulls his cloak out. He's got a bunch of like really... Really poisonous looking vials and a short sword and a flintlock pistol. I dabble in a few poisons here and there. So I know how to keep myself alive. Literally everything this guy is doing is making me want to trust him less. <laughs> I was just getting ready to say, like, I whispered awake, nothing says those poisons won't work on us at the campfire. I mean, if you want to drink nitroglycerin, son. <laughs> he makes bombs, he pretty much just told you, right? <laughs> look, we need, look, it's not that we don't appreciate the offer, we just don't think this is going to work out for this particular mission. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Your loss, son. He goes where's back. Scrum? He goes, <laughs> goes back to Tim. Yeah, yeah. We need someone along we can trust. Yeah. <laughs> we need a friend. 
our BFF Scrung. Scrung's been sitting there the whole time, just like taking his club, just like. Hmm. <laughs> Personally, I actually kind of vote we either take Risp or Scrung. <laughs> I am down for a vote on that one since what? I literally called the other two. Why Scrung? I am just curious. Just for I, the insult? I can think Not of no in-character reason. I really want to... <laughs> I, I mean, I guess he's good at sneaking. Is that a big part of what we're doing? It might be. Yeah. And again, I guess Risp is also pretty good at sneaking. Yeah, we don't really know what we're up against is the thing, so it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to prep for this mission. All I'm saying we don't is know we have coming. somebody that can like huck magic around in Ziaka. We have somebody that can take a hit. You know, and you guys Rino. haven't actually asked Ziaka about any of this. Yet. Oh God, she, yeah. Her, if, she, if she turns this down, that'd be insane. I guess we do need to her ask mission her. Mission is though. to go to the South Island. I, I go and talk to her. <laughs> I mean, we've just been consulting amongst ourselves as to who we should be taking. Yeah, yeah, like, you guys haven't actually spoken to anyone about this, apart from Gulfer. Yeah, well, I think we're all pretty much agreed on Ziaka, so yeah, let's go ahead and approach her first. And I think Nedra's just going to kind of follow us like a puppy dog, so. <laughs> no, she's playing with Timothy right now. Well, she's she, playing she, with Timothy, but she, I think... She's playing with Timothy by also adding gold into the pot with Gulfer. <laughs> okay, well, they're having a lot of fun. Uh, that'll at least distract those three. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to Nedra last. <laughs> all right, uh, I approach Ziaka. So you need to go to the South uh, Island to see your tribe, right? Yes. It seems like we're heading that way. Uh, would you be inclined to come along with us? Of course I would. However, I will warn you, there are the green folk we have to contend with along the way, and they will change the woods in front of us. The green folk? Yes. I unfortunately don't know their proper name. They're very elusive to us, and they speak in tongues that we don't understand. But I do know how to traverse through their trickery to get home. Oh, well, okay. Well, good, as long as we know how to traverse their trickery. I look back at Golfer. He's been there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was going to be my thought. I was like, I was waiting for him to be like, but we're going to need a really good guide to get there. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to need somebody really good with bombs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, they've set up barriers, and the only way I've found is for, to explode them. But my magic doesn't work. <laughs> However, I do feel that it would be dangerous if you did follow me into the city. <sighs> dangerous how? The other boot drops. My kind are not very enthralled with other surface dwellers who unfortunately have pushed into their temple. They would feel a lot of animosity towards two leggers walking in. She what what about four leggers? Those especially. Okay, just asking. They would probably try to eat you. I would not like that to happen. I could take you as far as the city limits, but then beyond that, my knowledge of traversing the jungle would be beyond that. There it is. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Sh should we make a deal with the swindler? I think it's time we make a deal with the swindler. <laughs> hey, golfer, that offer still stand? You just, you just see him turn around <laughs> as he's, like, pocketing all of the other's money away. Oh, yes! We're gonna get fucking killed in our sleep. <laughs> you don't so have he, to take him. He has no reason to kill us in our sleep. He doesn't, I'll say to, that. he doesn't have a reason to kill us, but I can totally see us getting to something valuable and him being like, Oh, looks like we got lost and Golfer disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> How about this? I actually have to take a quick bio break. Do you want to sit on this for a few minutes before we jump forward? No, I think we're pretty settled on uh, who we're taking. Oh, uh, all we, right. We can, we can announce that and then take the break, though, I think. Yeah. All right, so you're going to take Ziaka, but then we'll who else? We'll take Ziaka, we'll take Gulfer, we'll and we'll take, take Nedra. You can only take two. Oh, we can only take oh, two. Oh, we can only oh. take two. All right, yeah. then it's Ziaka and Gulfer. Very well. <laughs> that should do it for them. All right, well, and with that, you're going to take a bio break? Yes, yep. I am. And we'll be right back. Whoa! All right, gents. So with that, it is now 5 o'clock in the morning. Jesus. You are, you are all roused <laughs> awake uh, by Haros as he tells you to suit up and get the fuck out of the house. I was going to say, he's probably not thrilled with us, so he's ready to see <laughs> us leave. He's, he's fine with you. He's got no problem with you. I need to go collect my silver-tipped spear from the Gimme Bros first. Hmm. I will I will grant if you can roll me some really good fucking rolls, I will allow this. No. Roll me athletics. 
You're sprinting. I'm booking you're, it. You're gonna fucking book it to the shop. Uh, that is a 19. Wait, no, with advantage, uh, 21. Or not advantage, uh, proficiency. 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 Yeah. All right. As soon as soon as Harrow's walks down to get everyone else up. Fuck. You, <laughs> yeah. You you just like. And just run downstairs. Toast in your mouth. <laughs> you, uh, School you, bus is pulling away. You run into the magic shop. But remember, uh, Mead kind of said that he wanted to make sure that no one knew you guys were going to be going anywhere. So you may want to do this discreetly. I, I'm, go- I, I'm going to the Gimme Brothers shop. Yep, you are I now, think they'll be discreet. You are now in front of the Gimme Bro shop. Spear now! <laughs> You're, you shout at the door. No, I, I enter. Like... <laughs> It's slamming locked. through the door. Oh. Slamming through the door. Oh, no. Discreet, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm just running up to the door. I'm not, like, really paying attention to Shoulder whether it's locked or not. It. I'm just going, whoosh, just trying to push it in. Uh, this would be an athletics check again, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> That's a uh, 21 again. Nice. <laughs> get knocked on yeah, your they, ass. Oof. It's a fucking metal door. I was going to say, they deal in weapons. They probably have a very reinforced door. Hmm. Oh, okay. wise guy, eh? <laughs> Stand back up and knock on the door. <laughs> tink, tink, tink. Nothing. <laughs> I punch the door. I'm guessing a 15 hits. It connects with the door. It connects with the door, but your fist kind of hurts now. <laughs> I haven't done my damage yet. I'm no, no, oh. you you punch it. Bong. <laughs> you feel your middle finger crack. <laughs> I'll deal. <laughs> he really wants the spear. I kind of need it. I, I... All right, one second. Okay, that's even better. <laughs> uh. You finally like start hearing like churning on the from the back end. It sounded like something was charging up, almost like Skrung's pistol. There were light little runes on the top of the door, kind of like churning as if they were aimed at you and then turn back facing <laughs> forward. The door unlocks after four t- uh, after four little clicks, and you hear it you hear it open, and there's Gimme in a nightgown, like oversized pajamas, fucking. <laughs> Like giant, like dumb rockin' link hat flopped over his face. <laughs> what do you want? We're closed. It's not even seven yet. I want my spear. Fuck's sake! You couldn't wait until morning. No, there's something that really needs to get hunted. <laughs> <laughs> what? You asshole! Shuts the door. I put my. I, I before he can close it, I uh, get my. Uh, okay. Um, what's your AC again? Yeah, I was my say AC. <laughs> my AC is eighteen. Oh, that crunches on your hand. <laughs> <laughs> you take. Oh, wow, that's. <laughs> did they do max damage with a metal they door? They did max damage with a nat twenty. That's twelve points of damage. Your hand completely <laughs> bends to the side. <laughs> <laughs> Opens the door. Oh boy, you better hope I don't yell out some really insightful information. <laughs> oh god, hold on. Fine, fine. Us finding out their secret is maybe the worst possible thing that could have happened to them. <laughs> it would have been better if literally anyone had. <laughs> you, you hear like wh- like he doesn't open the door all the way, but you hear like whirring like the the shelves. Here, if you can hold it, he throws it at you. <laughs> Tink. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> <laughs> wow, not even the start of the day and you lost 12 HP. Not my best day. <laughs> but I wasn't going to leave without my weapon. Okay. You head back. Everyone's starting to get ready to head into the carriage. You, you two turn and see Wake's hand is kind of like 15 inches to the left where mm. it shouldn't be. You want a bandage, Wake? Can I, can I bandage well, it's that not, up It's for not you? really bleeding. You see the fucking paladin turn towards you. I was going to say, maybe, maybe we splint that up a little or... 
<laughs> Not at max, but you get 10 HP back. <laughs> Thank you. Boy, I hope, I hope Pan's a lot more gentle with his healings. <laughs> well, well, my good sir. We are not basked in the sun just yet. My powers aren't in full potential. Not, not, a, criti not a criticism, sir. I apologize. Do you worship Usha, son? I do not know who that is. Good. <laughs> Like, have you guys ever fucking seen, like, how when someone has a gas mask on, but you can still understand them, like, that, that audio muffling? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like that with this man. It's like, this is good. <laughs> oh, the crowd is mine. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> the fire rises. <laughs> I was born in the blue dot shadow. A fine so day to praise the sun, Batman. <laughs> It is. All right, shall we get going? <laughs> All righty. So before you guys leave, though, Mary does kind of, like, stop you very quickly, and she slips you all two healing potions. Hey. Yes. Thank you, Mary. A little good luck for the road. Hopefully you won't need it. He looks. She looks over to you as you're, like, still crunching your hand. <laughs> what did you do? Did you run and break it? Something like that, yeah. I was out there uh, practicing my. <laughs> yes, I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> she like shuts the door behind her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, by the way, you look up and all the Kenku are still there with crossbows pointed down. Hi, birdies. Man, these guys are good at their jobs. I would like to get into the boat now. <laughs> <laughs> you guys head into the carriage. Uh, you're there. I, I, I tell Nedra, be good while I'm gone. She's asleep. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to do a skit, but it's too dumb. All right. All right. Uh, wouldn't want anything dumb at this table. Yeah. That'd be <laughs> Impossible. No, of course not. So you guys get in the carriage. Uh, Ave Troy and Arahati are there. I got it right. Yes. <laughs> uh, they take you off to the docks. Uh, there's actually Havoc uh, standing at the side, lowering some uh, lifeboats down for you guys to take uh, across. And a really ra a bigger one, because they told that uh, Ziaka was going with you. So to adjust for her weight, they gave you a little bit of a bigger lifeboat. Hmm. How far out is the South Island? You could just see it. It's going to be probably like an hour's good row down uh, to at least reach the tip end of the north side of the <laughs> island. All right. <laughs> row. <laughs> do you want to take uh, heat on that? What's that? Do you want to take a uh, do you want to take rowing? He's going to swim. I could swim it. Oh, you want to swim it. All right. Shit. Scout ahead. I haven't done this in forever. Havoc is just like, if that's the case, if you're going to swim it. He looks over to Mead. Why, doesn't you, why don't you grab someone else then? Mead's just like, I suppose. <laughs> Another party member? Yep. All right. Is anybody around? <laughs> just hanging out <laughs> at 5 a.m. Yeah, who's awake? Roll perception. <laughs> I can think of one person that might have followed us. I got a nat one. So. I got a, uh, let's see, perception is wisdom, right? <laughs> we're, oh, nat, hey. we're nat one brothers. I got a 22. <laughs> hey. 22. We're the nat wonders. <laughs> okay, one quick second. I'm staring at the ocean. I, I'm pretty sure everyone's sure asleep. Wavy. I, I'm pretty I, sure I everyone's asleep. Cold today. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen natural wonders like this outside of browsers. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, what we got, Zito? I haven't seen any since I visited the Grand Canyon. But, uh, yeah, there's a there's a there's a fella 
sitting off to the side. He's about as big as the guard post off the side of the wharf. He's kind of just standing there, kind of leaned against the wall, leaned against it, not showing himself. But you can see those ears point up. That's Skrung. Hey, Skrung! <laughs> Why don't you come with us? Oh, no! <laughs> yes! Of all the people. <laughs> Skrung just, like, turns the corner. Hey! Hi, Skrung! I mean, you're around. There's... I don't, like, everybody else is asleep. I slink over to Skrung. <laughs> hey, what's that hand symbol mean that he always... Don't. It means we're friends, Eloy. Don't. Okay, that's but, but don't mimic oh, it. So okay. Uh, yes, that's right. It means we're friends. Best friends. <laughs> oh. The bestest of friends. In fact, you get two. <laughs> Finally. I love you too, Scrum. <laughs> <laughs> How does he reach that? <laughs> <laughs> you walk over to Scrum. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk over to Scrum. Hey, I. I mean, you were there. You know where. You know where we're going. What's up? No, I don't. He wasn't in the. He wasn't in the area when he was, he was in the tavern. I thought he was. In the oh, tavern. in the tavern. I thought you meant. Did he know about the South Island? I apologize. I assumed. Well, I mean, wasn't he there when we were basically talking about what we needed to do? Yes. No, he was there at the meeting, but I. Oh, thought, not, I thought you meant he was, was there at, he the, at South the South Island. Island? No. Okay. No. Gotcha. We could use an extra set of hands. Well, I mean, I don't. I want to look in a little bit more about this mimic ship of his. Oh, all right. Can't can't say I wasn't interested. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Golfer's there. He's just like he's talking it up with the paladin, like kind of like sizing him up. He's just like, "That's a nice suit of armor you got there. <laughs> I love. That I could probably make it better for yeah. you if you'd oh, like." Just a leprechaun. Yeah, he's a leprechaun dwarf. It's great. <laughs> so, if we invited you along, you've got enough of a motive to actually want to see this place. <sighs> I mean, sure. Why not? Great! I was gonna give you a bar of gold if you said no. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> he takes out his pistol. You already said it, buddy. <laughs> Click. <laughs> Click. It's it's. Nothing says we won't find other reasons for me to <laughs> taunt you yeah, with it. You, you just hear him go. <laughs> Thank God I don't load this thing. <laughs> <sighs> Once again, I lose Russian roulette. So um. I want you to also roll me an insight real quick. Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Uh, 15. There's something watching you. You, you <clears throat> don't know what it is, but you have a gut feeling as you walk down this wharf. There are prying eyes on you, and it feels otherworldly <laughs> and not fucking... Like, you just can tell that something is wrong. All right. I uh, just kind of say under my breath to the other guys... Don't act suspicious or differently, but I really feel like we are being watched right now. Oh, I got a nat 20. All what right. do I feel? You feel it, too. What are you rolling? Uh, I, I, perception or insight, I guess? Perception? Yeah. Okay, well, the only thing you can feel is that there's another fishing boat off to the side of you, but there's, like, nothing on it. Like, the docks have been closed off and no one's there. However, you are passing by, uh, you are passing by Havoc's ship. And that can only... Oh. <laughs> mm. You look towards one of the portholes, and there is one large bulging eye and very unruly hair kind of looking through. Hi, Grammy. She's trying to, like, bolster herself out of the window. I have something new for you to try. I'll Ooh. try We'll have to try that later. I think we're, uh... No, you try now! Okay, fine. We'll try now. You try now or <laughs> we'll I will now. scream my head off until you do. How can we live without this lady? <laughs> <laughs> I walk over to the window. Well, what do we got? For you, son. I know exactly what to do for you. She, like, sinks back in. You hear, like, <laughs> shit crash. <laughs> Inside the inside the ship. That's uh, probably a good sign. Yeah, no, I'm sure. One quick second. <laughs> Just pull out the small vial of cat's grace that I still have from her. <laughs> I mean, last time we did this, I had this, so. Mm. <gasps> oh, goody, goody gumdrops. That sounds nice. Mm, is that yes. you saying it, or is that Grammy? <laughs> oh, oh, no, that's Grammy. Okay. Oh, goody, goody gumdrops. 
she comes back out with a pie. Oh, oh thank you, Grammy. Taste it. You look at this pie. Uh, you want to roll a medical on this pie. <laughs> I want to roll a medical on this pie. What happened to this pie? It's uh, a meat pie. Uh, that's an 11. Hey, I have it's modified a, 21. It's a meat pie. Uh, what did you, what'd you roll? Modified 21. Modified 21. What can I detect about this pie? Um, you don't quite know what kind of animal this came from, but... I'm guessing it's like a meat pie that's kind of like not in a tin, right? Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, roll me con with disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Yeah, you know what? Okay. Mmm. I got a, uh, let's see, constitution that is 15. My second 15. one was a nat 20. All righty. 15. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ooh, and I rolled a nat 20 myself. Mm. Well. Mm. Your oh. muscles feel as big as a house. No, no, no. Mm. You feel your scales sharpen. Mm. You feel <laughs> you feel like it's you feel like your scales kind of like pop out, mm. but then <laughs> recoil back into place and your skin feels sharper. Okay, so I you basically have, got I got I got fishman goosebumps for a second. You there. got fishman goosebumps, but the goosebumps aren't going away. But it still feels natural. But you can still feel that your body has just felt like it grew out a couple of inches. Mm. Get plus one AC for the rest of the day. Oh man, mm. fuck everything that tries to hit me. Hey guys, this pie's pretty good. Oh. Can you tell the secret ingredients? Mm. Sneak oh, a slice. Over. Uh, survival, survival is plus five, 22. 22, eh? Yeah. Hmm. You know, you can't quite put it into words, but you think... This is raw puffer fish. <laughs> well, by the numbing of my tongue... You blowfish? <laughs> you you watch as like Icker falls from his mouth as he's talking. <laughs> well by the number of my heart, I will get the blowfish. But I will Uh oh. <laughs> I can't really take the anymore. I like you. You know Grammy's secret ingredients just by tasting it. Well, You're well, my favorite now. I'm so far, man. <laughs> oh, well, I'll keep Here you go, have some more. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. I can't stop. Hold on. Give, give me a handful of that. <laughs> I, I swipe some and also eat it. Roll My con. Con. You have to take this advantage, too. Yes, you do. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. Um, uh, mine is a uh, 10. Oh, God. Oh. You didn't quite beat it. That's fine. It you reminds me of when I was a child. When you put it in your mouth, oh boy, you want to get rid of this thing ASAP. But that bulging eye is looking at you, and you don't want to piss that off. You feel your esophagus get set on fire. There is now just constant heartburn in your gut. You should roll sleight of hand to get rid of it. <laughs> Well, I've already taken this uh, like just just be like oh <laughs> Eloy May I have um, some pie Grammy? Well Yes <laughs> Yay Come <laughs> I strongly want some my tongue can't feel things anymore. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> That'd be a seven. Oh good. Yeah, no. Yeah, you're getting that heartburn, my boy, and also you're watching um. his blood stripping out of his ears. <laughs> oh god. This is intense. <sighs> I don't. I I'm don't. Guessing, I'm guessing we don't get the positive effects because of this. I don't like it as much as the seagull, but thank you, thank you so much. Unfortunately, you two rolled far too low for it. You get disadvantage on con rolls for the rest of the oh day. Oh my god! Oh jeez, it made you sick. <laughs> Wake's been eating puffer fish for years. Oh, and fucking Scrung rolls a nat twenty. <laughs> Delicious. Pretty good, right? Are you gonna finish that? 
<laughs> you know what? It was good, but I already had breakfast. Go for it. Uh, same. <laughs> oh, oh God. Wait a minute. <sighs> I think I know this recipe. Oh, I see what you did. You made a hop special, you old goat. Um, yes! He knows the secret! Well, I just like Fugu. <laughs> Skrung made another friend. Yeah, that's nice. Nat one, uh, I'm sorry, plus one to his AC for the rest of the day. <laughs> I haven't had, I haven't had puffer fish since I was a baby. You have fucking Ziaka's attention. She's now like, you see, like she just peers over. <laughs> I, 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 I try to hand her like the other half of my pie. Mm? <laughs> Starting off the day with a dangerous dice roll of a pie. All right, she got a 17. That's disadvantage. <gasps> Ow! Oh, God. Rolled a three. Oh. oh. Poor Zia. Cut the reaction. I thought oh, I no, never happen. mind. The pie got a nat one on the poison. The pie <laughs> got a nat one. <laughs> Hold on. That was, was the that, that, that was the least poisonous pie. I got the poison sacks. <laughs> <laughs> she just takes a bite out of it. <laughs> she coughs up a rat. <laughs> okay. Is it alive? No. Oh. <laughs> coughs up a rat, takes more of the pie. <laughs> she doesn't get the effects, but she's not sick. <laughs> it's adequate. Oh, my tongue. Is starting to feel better. You watch this like Ave Lo and the rest of her friends are just watching this like. <gasps> you guys want to try anything? It's the local taste. No. <clears throat> Get oh, I'm sorry. You ready to go? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Your loss. I, I, I tie my. Uh, I tie my uh, spear to myself as kind of like a bandolier. Secret ingredient. I remove my boots and throw them into one of the boats. And in we go! <laughs> All right, so who's going to take uh, the helm at rowing the boat? I, I don't know if I'm properly shaped for this. Also, I have never done it before. Um, I'm willing to try. All you have is Skrung and Ziaka as well. I mean, I, I will give it a shot. I was, as I have said before in my youth, I lived in a fishing village. So. You roll athletics with advantage. You guys just roll athletics. All right. Uh, oh, wait. No. Uh, I was, I was just going to do a little flourish. I just rolled a uh, do, do, do athletics. Where are you? Plus five. 16 to like jump out of the water with my little merman tail. Woo! Like a flipper jump. <laughs> and dive back yeah, in. you guys watch as like his legs have now converged into one thing as soon as he hit the water. And so when he jumps out, you see he has like a merman tail. Woo! <laughs> my, my in water speed is insane, by the way. I have a 70. Yeah, that's <laughs> because nuts. I'm a monk. Well, I only got a five on my athletics. If if I I did not have uh, advantage, that was for him. Not, yeah, that was okay. Yeah, you want me to roll athletics with advantage? Thank God. Ha! Nat twenty with advantage. There you go. I think I'm good. I got a fifteen. Fifteen. My other roll was a three. <laughs> you, strangely enough, you would think after eating the pie and getting him sick. Like, feeling the wind in his face, it was kind of invigorating. He's actually pulling most of the weight in the rowing that you have, or you're having trouble to keep up. <laughs> so much so that the, the, the ship is starting to tilt a little bit. Hey! I'm just doing like, laps around the boats. Hey, guys! How's it going? <laughs> He's there. Everything's like, clear down here! Roll me perception. I got a, uh, wait, perception, wisdom. I got a five. Yep, everything's clear! <laughs> <laughs> Everything's clear, eh? Okay. Yep. One quick hot second. You guys have been rowing for like at least a good half hour. Slow down. Yeah, you Eli. you need a you need I a break to catch your breath. Oh jeez, I think that pie is catching up with me. We're gonna have. The mm. Mm. Roll me con with disadvantage. Disadvantage. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness, I've gotten the other one. <laughs> Four. Yeah, you hork over the, you lean over to the other side <laughs> and hork over. However, um, mm. what's your reflex? You may want to roll it. You may want to roll a deck save. Yeah. Oh no, okay. Luckily, that's not disadvantageous. Yeah. Oh, maybe it is. Not one. <laughs> Jesus. 
<laughs> you throw yourself into the water. <laughs> Now, before you I'd can react, all right. you don't. You, you see Captain him fall Hollywood. over, you're like, okay, I may as well oh, get him. Oh, he wanted to swim, too. He's a lot farther down than you think so. Oh. Something's got him. Shit. I am... How far away from me is he? He's about a good 50 feet down. All right, I can reach that in a turn, unless he's continually being pulled. No, he's being pulled. All right, well, I'm going after him. Pull out the spear. <laughs> Shit. You go down, uh... There's a really large bloater fish with a couple of tumors on it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, I'm going to uh, aim for the tendril that's holding him real quick. Oh, it's not a tendril. This thing's like got him by the jaws, by the back of his shirt, pulling him down. Oh. <laughs> God damn it. And these things don't react to pain. <laughs> you were all the nat one in the best of times, unfortunately. <laughs> Great. I've just got my dagger out, and I'm just... Trying to swipe at whatever. Well, got you me. gotta roll con because okay. not only did you roll in, not only did you not roll good on that, you are now also sick, but also kind of suffocating underwater. Yeah, and so I've got disadvantage. Con with disadvantage, oh, god damn it! Hey, okay. all right, uh, my disadvantage one wasn't too bad, so fifteen. You're able to keep your breath. <laughs> that, at least that's good. Okay. All Can right, I do now, anything to be like attacking what has got me? Like, do roll, I feel where it's going? Roll me. me. Hmm. I will allow either acrobatics or athletics, depending on how you want to get out of the situation. Acrobatics! Yeah, out of the situation. Uh, 17. A 17? Yeah. You are able to take your knife and slice the bit of cloth on the back of your shirt enough that you are able to get free. <laughs> I'm just... Okay. All right, rather than instantly attacking this thing, I am going to... Grab him and go yeah, up? Yeah, re resheath re my... Or, like... You know, let my spear hang on my back and grab him. You guys hear <laughs> as you swim back up. Yeah. So uh, ba basically, with the uh, speed. Uh, oh wait, yeah. Does that mean anything to me? It does. I want you to roll me a deck save. <laughs> oh, roll a deck save first. Yep. Do, do, do that is a dexterity plus. Um, that's a eighteen. It fails miserably. It opened its mouth. And you saw a fucking face inside of its gaping mouth. <laughs> oh. And within that mouth, it opened up that mouth, and a tendril came out to try and grab you and miss. Nope. Whoosh. Did a barrel roll. <laughs> yep, you make it to the surface. <laughs> Push. Ah. Hey, guys, you dropped him. Also, there's a monster down there. <laughs> ah. All right, well, I'm going to roll athletics for them. You're back on the ship. You better roll me athletics, too, my dude. All right. 16. Oh, the other ship ain't doing too hot. They're straggling behind, actually. That's <laughs> Ave Lowe's crew. And the Skrung. Navy, am I right? The yeah. Navy and Skrung you guys left on that ship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no! Oh. Also, why the hell would Skrung be okay going on the Navy boat? I thought, I thought Gulfer would be better with that one. Yeah. All right. Well, not our problem right now. Mm, especially not your problem when... uh. That tendril comes up and tries to lash at someone. Oh, excuse me! <laughs> no, not at you, at the other ship. Shit! Okay. It tries to go for Troy, but he whips out a hand axe and just goes, Ha! And <laughs> the fucking tendril just goes flourish. lashing away. Well. Good hit! <laughs> I ready my crossbow. You ready your crossbow? Yeah, whenever. Okay. I'm going I guess to. Guess I shouldn't just be doing this. this I'm going to give them one more athletics check before. Oh yeah, never mind. That's twenty. They fucking make it back with breakneck speed. They're up to you guys. You guys are at least a good five minutes away from the island. Roll me perception, wake. Uh oh. I don't see shit. You don't. You don't. <laughs> that's see a nat one. You don't see a goddamn I, thing. No, I don't see a goddamn thing. Uh. I. I I, I, I was, like, focusing over there when he swiped it. Oh, that was a good hit. <laughs> Just wow. Completely <laughs> focused on that. I don't see a goddamn thing. I want you to roll me decks with disadvantage. Decks with disadvantage. That's oh about right. Boy. Well, that's a good one. Let's see if it's... Yeah, that's okay, I guess. Uh, that is a 16. Even with disadvantage, you actually make it out of this. Whoa! <laughs> you watch as, like, the bloater... No, not even the tendril. The bloaterfish comes up, 
jumps out of the air screaming to dive on top of you. <laughs> Whoop! Excuse me, guys! <laughs> I dive and then just like do like a nice little J motion to get out of the way. No, you you like swan dive out of the way enough and you ride the wave. <laughs> Woo! Yep. <laughs> and the, that actually, it does. It propels you guys to be pushed forward. <laughs> you are now all knocked out of the ship. Oh, ah! they're all knocked out of the ship? Yep, the wave was that catastrophic. This is a big fucking bloater fish. All right, you guys are going to have to deal with this. I have to, like... No, swim. You guys oh. got to swim. Oh, oh, we, like... Gotcha, <laughs> I see. So I'm guessing I'll some sort cover of, you. <laughs> I'm guessing some sort of athletics or... Yep. Athletics. How's the paladin handling this in his massive armor? He's sinking. Fuck! <laughs> I'm going to go help the paladin. All right, everyone, Try! everyone else... Roll athletics. 18. Six. <laughs> 18, six. All right, Ziaka sees that you're floundering. With her giant serpentine body, she grabs you and hoists you back to shore. Thank you. You follow in after Troy. Oh, damn it. <laughs> the djinn's swimming along with you. Oh, hello. All right, so... There's him sinking, and off in the distance, you can see a giant silhouette swimming towards you guys. Well, luckily, I'm faster than it for right now. <laughs> yep. Well, she is actually going to cast something real quick. Let me just double check on this list. Yeah, she got that. All right, let me roll it. Ooh, hot damn. You watch as she starts, like, doing this intricate belly dance under the water. Yes, so I much, do. So much so, <laughs> Hello? Yeah, so much so that you're watching that, like, the water before her is starting to turn into a visible vortex, and it turns into a bubble-like sphere of a vortex. There is a whirlpool inside an orb being pushed at the creature. Hmm, nifty. Oh, wow. It just sits in it. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big bubble. That was her turn, and now it's your turn to go get the paladin. All right. I am going to grab the paladin, and I'm guessing athletics to... Oh, yes, indeed. To hoist him up. Uh, that's okay. That is a 17. I'm sure he's a heavy boy, though. He's a heavy boy, but he can also assist you in that. He's not going to be much help, but your speed is halved carrying him right now. Still faster than everyone else. <laughs> uh, I have a grappling hook. Would I have a chance to like throw that out to try and get something out there to... like? Start pulling them in. You could do that. Okay. Uh, he would just have to roll perception to see that grappling hook. All right. Well, yeah, I'm, like... I'm currently moving at 35 feet a second. Then. So. <laughs> uh, or 35 feet around. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, wow. <laughs> roll. All right. So roll perception and let me see how. Uh, oh, she's not going that far. She, you are way faster than her at this point. She is busy keeping this thing encapsulated in the bubble. If I'm going past her, I can hold out my hand and just reduce my speed again slightly. If you want to take another half, I'll do that. I, half for, like, I, I understand path on the fat-ass paladin with the massive armor, but. <laughs> I mean, towing Don't two question the DM, man. I, I won't question towing it. Towing two people at once, Slanny. <laughs> I got my big-ass fish tail. That's what I'm doing. Dude, you're carrying them. Don't worry. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. All right. I, I, yeah, fine. I still, I'll, have I'll to roll, I still have to roll for the fucking abyssal bloaterfish to get out of the orb. So. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I, I got them both. <laughs> All righty. Roll for the Abyssal Bloaterfish. He's not getting out. He's too dumb to realize it. <laughs> Stuck in a bubble. <laughs> uh, roll Perception. This has been good so far. Uh, that's slightly better. Uh, 11. You see what looks like a fishing hook bobbing in the water. Hey! <laughs> All right. Uh, I hand the fishing hook to Mr. Paladin. <laughs> Wait, no. I hand the fishing hook to Miss Hottie. She takes it. All right. M All right, Mr. I'm Paladin is already too heavy. I don't want to. Arahati takes hold of it, and right. as I'm assuming I feel a tug as yep. someone's shifting it. Someone help me over here! Yep, I'll jump in and help you out. Roll athletics, you two. And then I'm probably going to keep pace with their pulling. Net twenty. Thank God, I got two. <laughs> you just tie it to Eloy. Yeah, slap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he hoists Arahati with him like instantane. You just watch her like lurch forward. Whoa! <laughs> All right, uh, you have the paladin. The paladin still no help at helping you swim. His he his armor is far too heavy to get him out. Yep. 
Uh, let's, <laughs> okay. Let's try. Yep. Uh, oh, the bloaterfish got free with a nat 20. Perfect. Good. I hope it's not faster than 35 so feet. So have we pulled the Jin up to the... Yep. Okay. You uh, watch th as... Th like, I'm going to cast you, that you line watch, out again. So imagine if you will. There's, I will. There's Wake holding up this giant hunk of metal behind him trying to swim to shore. And then this giant... <sighs> Eyeballs creature, like mouth open, starts swimming back at him. So, you know, like the Bowser fight from <laughs> Yoshi's Island? Yeah. It's, it's that. I think you guys are familiar. I think we're, I think we're a little too familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> Roll me athletics check one more time, Lanny. All right. Eh, that is a 17. Or, I'm sorry, 16. All righty. And he actually kicks in some weight and helps by kicking. How uh, much of my top speed do I get from that? <laughs> you get back all of it. Oh, awesome. Yeah, oh, wow. 70 feet. Yeah, you guys, like, fucking make it across. But uh, <laughs> that's not stopping this thing from coming towards you. <laughs> do I make it to shore? Uh, you make it to shore. But right. it's still coming at us, I think is what he's saying. You, no, uh, you watch as this thing is now towering over you at least a story. Here he comes and... <laughs> hits, it, the, hits the... He, hit, he his mouth was open that he swallowed the sandbar and now he's stuck. Oh. And Aquan, better luck next time, buddy. It closes its mouth and sinks into the water. <sighs> so we're just gonna let that. Okay. My <laughs> my my legs turn back into well, my tail turns back into legs. As I get out of the water. Welcome to the South Island. You can see the Northern Island from here, but boy howdy. I can't remember. Have I seen him transform his legs before? Never. Nope. None of you have. You can do that? <laughs> yep. I look back at sea. Rip boots. <laughs> <laughs> With... <laughs> oh my fucking gentle lord. I didn't have time to save him. <laughs> well, lads, that was nice, but... How do we get off this island now? I can get off. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to tow everyone, but hey, how about that ship? Presumably the guy that cha that we chased here also has some sort of ship, so at least we'll be able to get some of us off and maybe ferry people back and forth. Hopefully well, based without on, incident. Based on our hotties' uh, uh, vision, you guys saw a rowboat, so he came the same way you guys did. Kind of. <laughs> I'm assuming with uh, less He problems. must have something on him that makes it so that the abyssals don't attack him. He, Avelo looks at you. Well, he does have the most, the highest amount of knowledge in being able to at least tame them in some capacity. Hmm. That would help. His knowledge of the abyssal must have what kept him safe coming here. But anyway, you turn around. There is a lush jungle behind you. You, can <sighs> wa you watch as the... The land you're standing on, kind of like the bar of sand to, uh, goes left and right, and it kind of like circles around the giant lush that's in front of you. So you can take the shoreline, but pretty much going forward is going right into the uh, right into the jungle. However, I want you all to roll me a perception check. Uh, 19. 20. Modified 20. Nat, uh, nat you, 20, sorry. You all can see that there is a dormant volcano off to the side going towards the left side of the island. Okay. okay. A volcano to our left. A dormant volcano over that way. And this is the south island, right? Yes. So we're heading south to get here, so that means it's to the it's on the east side. It's on the east side, yes. On the eastern side of the island, you can see that there is a dormant volcano. All right. I unseal my little... Uh, cartographer's kip that I keep wrapped around my leg. I just kind of start sketching some of this stuff since the South Island is incredibly vague on my maps. Alrighty, so they have the ship. Now, you uh, you see his ship there, but unfortunately you don't see any markings on the floor that may tell you otherwise. What do you guys want to do? I mean, that genie lady seemed to have a uh, pretty good way of tracking people if we can find any sort of evidence in there at all. Yeah, I'm going to check out the, the little rowboat. Unfortunately, I can only read magic, and that was, was left on the girl's arm. Mm. That makes sense. 
Either way, I still want to check out that rowboat, see if there's anything in there. Maybe it's a magic rowboat. We don't know. You don't know. Maybe we stab a crap ton of holes in it, then it's never getting off. No one said the mimic ship was big. Maybe this is all it is. Uh, <laughs> Hello, are you a mimic? <laughs> I investigate. And roll too far. <laughs> oh. Uh, I saw it, and then I turned it, so I couldn't see what it was. So let roll, me roll that roll again. Roll again, please. Hey, uh, modified 20. All right, you take a look inside the rowboat. Uh, <clears throat> it looks like it was busted underneath it. There's a floorboard missing. Okay. Well, but it looks like he didn't have perfect control over these. That or hit some. Either that or he took it with him so nobody would take it. You don't see anything else inside of there. However, you do notice that that floorboard that you were looking at, uh, there's, a piece of clo- there's a piece of leather broken to the uh, piece of it. Check like this the, out. Yep. So you pull out what looks like a piece of a shoe. Ah, a little bit more of this and I can cover my feet again. Hey, there you go. Uh, well, you said only magic helps with the, the whole seeking business, but I guess this is a clue. We've got some leather. He wears fine boots. <laughs> uh, you can investigate the area if you'd like. Scrong actually, like kind of like eyes that and actually kind of holds his hand out like, hey, let me take a look at this. Here you go. He's going to roll investigate. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. Nat 20. He knows exactly no, where he didn't get a nat tw- and- He didn't get a nat 20, but... All right, he rolled the investigate. Let's see if he gets the... Oh, my fucking God, Scrong. You just kicked in, like, MVP mode. <laughs> Strong suddenly goes into CSI mode. <laughs> just like, I saved two people from a giant fish. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Scrong investigates a shoe. Not even a shoe. <laughs> a chunk of leather. He takes a look at the chunk of the leather shoe, and he notices that on the back of it, there's actually a little bit of abyssal residue on it. Hey, well, would uh, well, well. this stuff be magic? Well, it wouldn't be... Uh, Arahati takes the bit. It wouldn't be enough to give me a full lead, but it is something. She, once again, takes like a... She goes towards the water, lifts it up with her hand, kneels down, kind of like bobs her head a little bit. I dream of Jeannie, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's the little nose twitch. <laughs> yep, the little no, nose that's twitch. That's bewitched. Ah, oh, you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I dream of wow, Jeannie kind right. of like sway... The little orb of water that she holds in her hand, she puts the piece in, and it shows him. You actually see Victor, like in oh. first person mode. You are looking through his eyes as he runs through the woods. He then hears an, a really eerie screech as he turns around, and what looks like a sort of lizard like form is now kind of like bobbing and weaving through it, and there's something on top of the lizard. Ah, good, he's running from something. He's running from something, he's bobbing and weaving. You can't quite make out what the form is, but you do watch as he runs into another humanoid, something really tall and slender. And it kind of like dodges nimbly out of the way, and he enters a clearing, and that's about as much of the vision as you're getting. Ziaka, did that lizard thing look familiar to you at all? Oh, unfortunately, yes. Is that one of the green ones? The creature, I, the creature that he met before running away, uh, after running away, that was one of the green ones. The lanky humanoid thing? Yes. Unfortunately, if we wanted him alive, I don't think that might be happening. That was one of the Alpha Riders. The Alpha Riders? Yes. There are... There are canine creatures that have the capability of actually commanding some of the velociraptors on this island. That, velociraptors? There's raptors on this island? We yes. We T-Rex. Oh, that's so cool. We usually hunt them for sustenance. You hunt the raptors? Wow. This is not where I saw the food chain going. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> right. Well, they don't look so scary to me. More like an overgrown turkey. <laughs> Well, huh, well, okay. Do you know where, like, did you recognize anything from the jungle he was running through? Any idea where that clearing is that he found? What about you, golfer? We brought you here because you seem to know this place. Kind of wanders away a little bit. Hey! 
I'm just kidding, lad. I'm just kidding. Unfortunately, all I know about is on the beach. If we head over that way, he points over to the west. I know there was, uh, dippings of a little bit of a boat. And, uh, some broken pieces of wood. Someone crashed here. That's where I figured we'd find our missing mimic pieces. Well, something tells me that's gonna be our way off here, so we might have to investigate that a little later. Up to you, Sonny Jim. Up to you. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it is. Ave kind of like looks towards it. Well, in that case, our first course of action is going straight into the de- uh, straight into the jungle. Snake, you said you know this location, yes? She has a name. Her name is Ziaka. She kind of like narrows, like flicks her tongue. <laughs> I do. Then by all means, lead the way. She kind of like hisses as she lean as she like. She go. She slithers past Ave and like hisses at her, and then leads the leads the way. Do you follow? Yeah, yeah. I, fo- I follow Ziaka. Very yep. well. I, in fact, I walk up to Ziaka. Man, she's a bitch. <laughs> what is that word? There's a word meaning not nice person. Only specifically for a woman. I. Is that in common? Yes. You're a bitch. Whoa! <laughs> I know that. She said that to me. No, she said that. Okay. She turned around and looked at Ave. You're a bitch. <laughs> In the oldest stories, that's one of the uh-huh. oldest names we have for Old Lady Big Rock Mountain. <laughs> 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 you don't say. <laughs> Your people astound me. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm so glad I teach people these things. <laughs> I just, I just look back at Ave Lo. What a da 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 da. All right, everyone, roll me survival with disadvantage. Oh, but that's one of the things I'm good at. <laughs> All right, sixteen. Uh, da, da, da. Managed to middling rolls. Fifteen. Eight. All right. So you are traversing through the, the lush jungle. You're hearing all the tropical birds to your two's dismay. All the tropical birds sound familiar. There actually are, like, rather large lizards that, like, run away from you as you go past the trees. There are some pretty big insects, but none with the lion properties as before in the swamp. <laughs> okay. And there is actually a bunch of bananas just growing off the sides of the trees as you walk by. Hmm. And they look rather ripe. Hmm. If I were a fruit eater. <laughs> I'm going to use, uh, I'm just going to do some perception here just to look around those bananas, make sure like reaching for these doesn't <laughs> trigger some sort of trap or Go for it. an animal. You find a, uh, uh, like you're looking at a really large cluster of bananas right now, like, and they're in reachable yeah. like range. Modified twenty one. It's a really stout tree, by the way. Like it's oddly squat. Okay. Uh, modified twenty. Modified twenty one. Uh, modified twenty one. You take a look. I guess I don't have to say modified for that. There's no way I rolled a twenty one. <laughs> yeah, it's just a twenty one. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. You go to reach for it, and you're like, you're not feeling any like ill will about the fact of this. Like, you obviously like it's a short tree, but that's Look, we- there's and that's plenty weird. for everything. <laughs> yeah, but you go. Well, to I don't reach know if it's just you- some sort of weird lure that a giant lizard creature has. <laughs> no, you do notice that one of them looks like it was pulled off, but it was cleanly, like almost someone used a tool to take the banana off. You look on the floor, <laughs> and there are small tracks leading off to the side. Hey, uh. This, I think I found a trail, guys. It's almost as if things live here. (laughs) Ziaka looks down at it. Nothing that tiny, though. That's bizarre. We, something of his nature, of his stature, does not belong on this island. Looks over to Skrung. Skrung looks at it. Survival, I got an 18 on it. Survival, you got an 18? Uh... This is not uh, this is not common, not either to you or to Skrung. Skrung's kind of intrigued by this. He takes a look at the uh, the footprint that's left in it. He looks up at the ban- at the banana once more. 
Can one of you tallers just cut off the base of a banana real quick? I want to look at something. Sure. I take my I take my <laughs> my navy mithril dagger, <laughs> <laughs> cut it down and pull it to hand it to him. As Ave, it. Ave's like just glaring at you. Finders keepers. Scrong takes a look at the banana, and I'm gonna roll survival for him. And that's a good survival. Man, he peels the he's he, pull, he peels the tip of the banana away, and there's like a mark of blood, like something that was bleeding from the mouth bit into it. See, who's glad we brought Scrong? Yeah. Oh no. Kind of like throws it to the side. Well, I'm hoping this isn't what it is. What do you think it is? I look at it. I've Ew, got the banana blood. I reached for. Can I eat this? Is this going to be dangerous? I don't... Th well, I'm sure you can eat the banana. Oh, That's thank God. fine. <laughs> but it's whatever took the other banana is what I'm concerned of. If it's all the same to you, I'd actually like to go check this out. <laughs> don't worry. I think there's something in it for you. He looks over <laughs> to Gopher who's just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> What about them? They're going to be kind of harder to convince. I'd nod to the Navy. Any lead is a good lead. I suppose we can allow the goblin to lead headfirst into danger. I like your spirit. I'm going to kill you last. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, I'm not It's a real will anymore. they, won't they scenario. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, and yeah, Ave's just like, you wouldn't. I don't know, would I? So, Who knows? <laughs> Skrong is now going to take the lead on this one. Heading off into the woods. You walk for at least a good 10 minutes. You don't feel like you're making a lot of progress. And even for walking, like, west of where you were going, like, you were heading in deeper into the woods. By now, you should have felt like you could have reached the shoreline. That's not the case. Am I feeling very similar to how we were feeling when we were, uh, it, it, like, trying to get to uh, Deimos in the Underdark? Roll me a arcane. Uh, that is a 14. This is different. You feel like you're being played, but this is not by the same means as someone moving a wall. Well, no, I meant like when we were walking in with all the birds. With all the birds? Yeah, the, the same hallway we were walking through there. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. Like, you, okay. like that so was a moving like wall. Oh, okay. Like, this is not like... This is not a moving wall. You're just feeling like... I'm you, feeling, like, really turned around. You're feeling turned around. Like, nothing is moving. Nothing is changing. Nothing's shifting. For all intents and purposes, you feel like you should have reached the shoreline, but you're not there right. anymore. As we continue on, I make a mark on one of the trees, just like... How do you a, do so? Uh, I take my dagger, and I make a little star shape on one of the trees that we're walking by. Everyone stops so you can do that. They feel that that's a very wise idea. <laughs> I, yeah, I just it. mentioned to Ziaka, is this what you were talking about? How the green ones can manipulate things? Yes. We are off the path, unfortunately. I can take us back, but going further is not of something I can do. This is all hinged on him for now. Skrung's just like, all right, all right, listen. I know it seems <laughs> weird, but I really just have to see if what I'm afraid of is true. Ah, oh, damn. After another five minutes, you all, like, still continue walking. He's still following the tracks, but you're back at the tree where the star was made. Hmm. I point that out. Looks like we've gone in a circle. Oh, no. Don't tell me this. I can't... I can't let the enemy of the Goblin Kingdom go away. Oh, whoa. What? Hold on. Us. I'm afraid that we might be face-to-face -face with a brownie. Oh, a what? Whoa! <laughs> my, my mama used to cook those for me, and they was delicious. I don't see what the problem is. What? Have you ever okay. heard of a small little creature? They're not like us goblins. They're actually enemies of the goblins. They're little fey creatures that kind of invade the goblin realm and steal things, but by really, really unsavory means. And when I mean that, I mean they go straight murder. Oh, oh! So this is like one of those one of red those... caps. I think the commoners call them. This is like one of those no-no brownies that make you feel all dizzy and, and weird. Yes, is that why like we've that. been walking in a circle? I'm guessing. I don't think that's the red caps doing. I feel like whatever these green things are that Ziak is talking about, they're having to do with us getting lost. But these tracks are still fresh. 
Is this thing just I as mean, confused as we are then? Is probably. it also trapped not, in this not, illusion? Not as fresh as they were five minutes ago. Probably. I don't know if... How, like, major are these green ones able to alter the forest? Unfortunately, their magic is very, very... Their magic within the greenery is very grand. If we walked around the island, we could have possibly avoided this, but there's no way. Going... We would have reached... The, we would have reached the end of the beach and would have had to come in here in the first place. So there was no way we were avoiding a conflict with these guys' magical terrain. I'm gonna, like, Scrung is just, like, scratching his head, just like, no, I really need to make sure this is not what I'm fearing. I know this is out of the way, but trust me, I think this might be worth it to you guys. In a rare moment of sentimentality towards Scrung... <laughs> As much as a dick that we have all been to each other, <laughs> you have never acted this serious. So, guys, I think we should follow him. We're going with you, Scrung. We'll figure this out. If it's a brownie, I really pray that we can get this thing before it does any damage. Oh, yeah! 19 <laughs> on Scrung. <laughs> Scrung with the killer rolls. All right. You travel once more into the breach. You don't see the tree anymore. You actually enter a clearing. Oh. However, this we time, did it. <laughs> yeah, no, you see the clearing, but Scrung kind of like holds you back, like, no, don't go any further. I see it. Get down. Everyone roll stealth. Ooh, 21. 17. Uh, 19. All right, and for Ziaka, Ziaka is a sneaky snake, and she gets down. Now let's She's roll. used to this let's, area. Let's roll for the other guys. Yeah, she gets down. Hey, Paladin, go go say hi. <laughs> Paladin rolled a 20. Oh, never mind. He's good. Clank, He's just holding up, holding up a tree. <laughs> he instantly reflects the forest around him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He wears mirror plate. <laughs> so. I don't know if that's ever been a thing. Now everyone, <laughs> uh, you look off into the distance. Scrung kind of like points out where he's looking. You watch as there's a tree that's been knocked down. And it looks like it's been carved out. Like, it looks like someone was trying to chop into the tree a small hole. As a giant red, like, a giant red hat kind of, like, peers up. So, who here knows Old Man McGucket from Gravity Falls? Oh, yes. I know who you're talking about. So, imagine something like that, only He's smaller. Crazy old man. Like, the frame is, like, the frame of his body is spindly. His shoes are quadruple his size. Yet somehow they're buckled onto his legs. He's got a giant head. It's old man McGucket with a giant head. All right. And a giant red cap that spirals down. And around his mouth, you can see that, like, he's been biting down on shit. And his teeth are chipped and broken to all hell and back. And his mouth is bleeding, like gingivitis to the extreme bleeding. Oh. He is taking a small pickaxe at the tree banging at it, and he's got a sack to the side of him. But what he's trying to hide is he's got a small box that he wants to put inside the tree. Well, just that Nudge box is Scrung. interesting. This our guy? Scrung's got a pistol at the ready. Gonna say yes. All right, fair enough. <laughs> Let's just play out. Unless you all want to join in, that might be the best thing. We want this thing dead. If it sees us, we have problems. Scrung, I have no reason at all not to trust you. <laughs> you did say he was your friend with two hands this morning. <laughs> so uh, if any of you have I, any range, take aim now before we fire. I ready my crossbow. Uh, yeah, I'll draw my short bow. <laughs> Scrung takes out his pistol. <laughs> just fucking murder this thing, all right? Yeah, <laughs> we're just going to blow the hell out of it if that's... If Scrung is this scared, I'm going to... How many feet away is it? It's about... From this distance, you have like a 50-foot shot on it. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ziaka actually like summons up a small bolt, and then Scrung goes, No, 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 no. No magic. That's the worst thing we should be doing right now. So um, Arohati's just like, Oh, well, there goes my fun. <laughs> <laughs> What's Golfer doing? Golfer? Yeah. <laughs> we lost him back in the jungle. He's got, a, he's got a little uh, vial. Fucking bomb? Yeah, he's got a grenade ready. <laughs> as long as it's not magic. I guess I'll pick up a rock. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to help. I don't have anything else. Everybody else is no, going to yeah. be shooting at it. Hey, I, All right. I give you. Uh, roll survival. Gee, where is there a rock? Is there a rock? Is there a rock uh, for 16? 
there 16. Are any rocks around here? Uh, there's a rock, but it's beyond the bush in front of you. Uh, so reaching for it will... Well, you could uh, reach for it. Hmm. I don't know if it has any sort of, like, barrier trap or, like, if it has some sort of, like, magical... You can start reaching for it, and Skrung will probably freak out if he thinks you're doing something dangerous. All right, I'll start reaching for it. No, he's too fixated on the sun, the sight of this thing. He doesn't see you do right, anything. I'm gonna roll. I'm gonna roll stealth for it. Uh, that is a twenty-five. You reach out for the rock, and you notice that there's a small scribbling of a rune on it. I stop. <laughs> <laughs> I pull my hand back. He's got traps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, actually, what's funny is, is I'm going to roll a stealth check for Troy because he's got a musket. <laughs> <laughs> a stealth musket. Sink. Puts a silencer on it. Sink. <laughs> Sink. <laughs> no, he had that shit prepped. Okay. So, you got Troy, you got Siaka, you got Skrung, and you got you two taking aim on this shit. All right. Just <laughs> All of a sudden, he's a roll friggin'... the hit, my dudes. I should really just carry around one of those guns. I'm not proficient in them, but at least I'd have something. Yeah. I have a modified 20. Nine. So, yeah, the only ones who are going to hit this thing are Ezra and Troy. Yeah. Man, poor Scrum. I mean, he has a pistol. pistol no, you take, he accurate. takes the shot. Siaka throws the Eldritch bolt she was throwing at him. Wait, I thought he said don't do magic. Didn't he stop her? Oh, that's right. Blech. I'm sorry. She misses anyway, so it <laughs> didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, she missed anyway, so yeah. You know what? That's fair. She doesn't do it. She uh, <laughs> She's she just standing there watching like he yeah, is. Yeah, she's just standing there watching like you do. Oh, I'm sorry. I Now I know what the role was. It was Ave. She had a pistol, mm, too. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So Ave missed. Uh, she didn't miss. Like You actually watch as the shot takes aim, but then one of the little rocks that you were trying to pick up, just like starts wiggling and then jumps up and gets in the way of the shot. Oh. Okay. And you hear like a small screech from them, almost like an alarm go off. However, Troy's shot goes through the rock. Nice. It takes the rock with it, and the rock goes at the brownie at lightning speed. Wow, it got faster. <laughs> it's getting hit by a... Oh, yeah. By a musket bullet. Yeah, musket bullet. So it's taken... Hot damn. He's taken five points of damage as the rock bashes against his face. Bah! Did my crossbow bolt do anything? Yes, it did. Roll damage. Uh, Plus my... And you get dex. sneak. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Plus my sneak. So uh, sneak is... 1d6, two, I think. Or, yeah. or is it 1d6 no, or 2d6? Yeah. Oh, wow. Plus 2d6. Yeah. Plus five, plus four. So nine, uh, nine plus four, and then 13. dex is also. Yep. So 16. Wow. 16 damage? Yes. This is, Zink. This is where and rogues are real good. And, and, unless I'm way off in my math and how that works. No, you, um, so you watch as the rock hits him in the forehead. He, <laughs> ah! No, he launches his neck back. Ah! <laughs> into the tree. He's dead. Oh, damn. Good shot. I'm glad I wasn't on the end of that one. And here I was this close to you using watch explosive the body ball. Goes, <laughs> Just nudge. <laughs> and he turns into smog and disappears. Do, do they that, always do that? Does that, does that work? Yeah, they're kind of theatric like that. He's dead. Then I nudge Skrung. Uh, hey, this is for all the times I've <laughs> been a dick. <laughs> Noted. You got a few more in you. <laughs> You're still a dick, but a dick with a good shot. Not, not going to say it's not going to happen again. Just letting you know. <laughs> Don't say I never did nothing for you. How we, but he does like kind of just look over at the traps. That doesn't mean there's still any more traps lying around. So best be careful. All right. Now, I want to figure out what's in that box it was trying to hide. That's a good question. Well, first we got to navigate this area. Yep. Would it be survival, perception... What's so what's the you best know for traps? you know that there were traps. You watch as like the two like the three of them bounce up. Mm -hmm. So you saw there were three as far, traps. As far as I can tell, they're just barrier alarms, though. As far as you can tell. Yeah. 
So like you want one of them roll. bounced up, one of them what bounced been, up and got shot back into him. What would have been great is if that one that like got bounced into him like also exploded or something. So if you want to uh, Guys, roll an investigation, go for it. You are the sneakiest boys I know, yeah, and if gonna, you're gonna, real, try, real careful, to, yeah, then I believe that you area. will be fine. Those can be added to any saving throw within the next 10 minutes, should okay. that become needed. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm just going to try to navigate the area. You said investigation? Investigation. Well, I rolled an at one in investigation, so I'm like, oh, good, yeah. they're gone! Yeah, they can, it can be added to skill checks, too, if that should prove more Yeah, useful. meanwhile, I'm, uh, let's see, what would be the best thing? I think it's, uh, it's either, I, I think it's survival for checking for this kind of shit, or is it No, stealth? it's, it's, uh, so wait, what are you trying to do? I'm just trying to, like, get around all of these. You don't know where they are. You know where the other two are, but you, you said you were looking to see if there were other ones. So all right, well, in, okay, if it's perception, then that's a 19. You what, like, so you know the perimeter of the entire clearing? Mm -hmm. You can see the alarm traps there, but you can't really tell if there's anything else trap-wise inside the clearing. For all, all right. you know, it was just an alarm barrier. All right, so I'm gonna go through the alarm barrier. Beep, 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 <laughs> beep. All right. <laughs> I continue uh, looking around on this inner area and just trying to, like, clear a way in as I go. All right, so you do notice that there is a corpse. There's a deer corpse with a bunch of bite marks on it. All right, so it ate a deer. And a bunch of bananas, too. It ate a deer and a bunch of bananas. Good potassium. <laughs> it's like it doesn't even understand flavor profiles. <laughs> 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 a deer uh, the rest of Grammy's pie got washed away in venison. the water, I'm afraid. Venison with banana glaze. <laughs> okay, so you want to uh, go ahead and check what's in that box? Yeah, sure. What's in that box? All right, you open the box. <laughs> Roll FX. <laughs> All right, let me just double check something real quick here. Whatever it is, it was worth hiding. Or attempting to hide before it got murdered. <laughs> it's just photos of his family. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's a note saying that the goblins are really evil. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently he was only two days away from retirement. <laughs> All right, you take a look at that. Uh, it's a photo of you the open child that box. he's been. <laughs> he opens it. You open it up. It's a tankard. It's a really ornate tankard. It actually depicts a bunch of goblins sitting in tables. Swigging back with uh, with another with another set of tankards. Hey, Scrung, does this mean anything to you? Well, it does look like it was something made by goblins. Brownies are actually known to stealing things from other people's houses. Like I said, they can just somehow find a way to break through into the realm of the goblins, and they kill and just steal with wanted disregard. May, may I see that? Yeah, sure. I hand Eloy the I tankard. I, I look at the little carvings of the goblins with their tankards. I want to see if there are carvings on those tankards of smaller goblins with smaller tankards. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Eloy. <sighs> there, in fact, are! You stare into infinity, and you think there are, but you're just now, you're, you now watch as the asinine centaur is sitting there looking at things that aren't there. <laughs> Meanwhile... I just learned that however, gods weren't evil. Now I'm staring into his very soul. However, <laughs> Skrung looks into the sack. Okay. Oh, that's right. It had a sack. All right. Gonna roll a quick survival. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not survival. Investigation. Investigation, yes. He kind of like opens the bag, pours it out. There's a lot of gemstones, like a lot of really precious gemstones in this thing. Followed by the corpse of a goblin. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Like, Skrung just, like, looks at this and kind of, like, revolts at it. Because this thing looks like it's wearing a uniform. Like, a really, like, a red, like, nutcracker sweet-looking uniform. Like, okay. really diamond-up shoulder pads. Oh, yeah. It has a crumpled-up hat. And what looks like a broken musket. You know this guy? I know of what he's wearing. That's that's the kingdom's a uniform. That's the military uniform. Man, you sure do seem attached to this goblin kingdom. Well, who would? What goblin wouldn't? 
What you don't know it. Well, I guess it, I don't know if this means anything to you, but all of us, all the goblins, are tied to the kingdom in some way. It's how our culture survives. No, we I always, we always know that we can Just retreat into other worlds, and then we can always turn home, return home. So any no, I, I any, sem- the- any resemblance of home is welcoming, but not in the same way as we're looking at it right now. No, I understand. We merfolk were the same way once. I look over at the navy. Who? Well, yeah. sounds tense. Aruhati just looks at you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hold on, I just I need to cut this tension. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to write down uh, what treasure you guys got, but I think this might be a good stopping point. Seems All like right. it. All right. So, All hail Scrung, the Goblin King. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drink to him from my infinity tankard. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you guys got a mystery tank. You got a Goblin tankard. Eloy can have that. He <laughs> seems very fixated on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I will offer it to Scrung if it will remind him of home. <laughs> Three perfect rubies. Ooh. Wait, do we each get this or I think we this can each have one. Sack. Okay, this, this, this is, is just so everybody cool. take one perfect ruby. Sure. I need to reformat this thing. Me My too. list is all messed. And a pouch of six uh six musket bullets. I can't say I have a use for that. Me neither. Do we In fact, g- the paladin. Yeah. I was going to say, do we want to give that, that to Ma- the paladin? He, yep. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, those were the rolls on that. I was just saying. Like, hey, it, it, it was a high, low, and a medium chance. But hey, we made it through, and Ezra got, like, what? Is that, like, your second kill? Yeah. I finally uh, finally snagged someone. And you nailed you, uh, him. And you also, yeah, you, also, you also apparently did a good favor to the <laughs> Goblin Kingdom. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I helped Scrung out after yeah, Scrung months kind of, of abuse. Scrung will remember this. Yeah, Scrung is now this like is the going first the good <laughs> thing we've done for Scrung since saving his life. Going through the body, Scrung actually like takes out a small little pin that has a weird goblin marking on it, and he takes it and puts it in his pocket. All he right. kind of like mutters he, something in goblin and then walks off. Sit by himself or something? Or? No, he just like that's where we're gonna stop. He like takes right. the he takes the emblem off the I'm goblin sniff, body, sniff, 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 sniff. puts it in his pocket, some and kind of, of just goblin like mourning, ugh, like like he's a little torn by this. All right. Well, goddamn. And that's where we'll stop. By the way, guys, next week after uh, we get done here, we plan on doing uh, well next Tuesday, I should say. Yes. We plan on doing yes. a D&D Q&A on the TFS Discord. Ooh. So mm. feel free to join us there. Actually, no, we'll probably be doing it live on stream, just reading off questions, yeah, answering things as not. we go. Yeah. Uh, but speaking of oh, yeah, let's, uh, make reading sure. things off, thank you so much for joining us. And we want to, uh, let's, fingers crossed that, uh, yeah, that Streamlabs, Streamlabs is working well now. It itself this time. Uh, I'm so happy you guys took Scrung because <laughs> that that encounter would not have happened if you didn't take him. No, I'm happy we took Scrung too. I pushed for it for <laughs> <Yeah>. no reason. <laughs> uh, let's see. We got. I'm glad I decided to swim. <laughs> yep, Stretch I actually my I actually put that into account. I'm just like, I hope he remembers that he can actually swim across. I have not had a chance oh, to do it. <laughs> he's been waiting with bated <laughs> breath to do this. Every time we've encountered water, it's like, and it's full of piranhas. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, hey, that but now, seems now, like a great now it was time. Fil- now it was filled with dire bloaterfish <laughs> abyssal. Let's see. I I'm was gonna... ready to fight something. I, I was ready. I mean, probably wouldn't have been able to take that thing very easily, but I'm glad I got that kill shot because otherwise, I have not been impressing that lady who might know something about a Lockwood. <laughs> yeah, Yono, you turn and look at Ave Lo. She's just like. Hmm. <laughs> After being called eh, a bitch eh, by half the eh. party. <laughs> I didn't call her that. No, only only uh fucking uh, Ziaka told her that. It's just like it's like when you teach a little kid a curse word and he says it out loud and he's so proud about it. That's what Ziaka was at that point. She said a bad in common. Good for her. <laughs> so okay, let's see what we got here. We got a uh, an eleven month resub from Mod Rain. Thank you. With oh, thank a bunch- you kindly. Yeah. No message, just a bunch of Mr. Steaks. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mr. Steak. Steak. The kindest message. <laughs> a five-month prime resub from Asuk's BMW saying, This is my favorite stream. Unfortunately, I won't be able to watch the rest of it tonight oh. due to having to be at a Cub Scout pack meeting. Well, that's Aww. what the archives are for. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Let's see. We got 500 bits from Is House saying, So Wakes become the nature boy now. Woo! 
Woo! Yep. <laughs> Uh, let's see, we got a, a double sub from Les Loppins uh, <laughs> saying, just popping in here, to- hope TFS crew is feeling better. Obviously, Nick's still got a little bit of a cough there, but... I still got a little uh, stuff that I'm working through. The tea really helped drink, tonight, Drink though. your tea, son. I was and about thank, to say. And thank God, the, uh, thank God the wake voice is just down here. And you know what? Doing that while sick, not hard. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I think for a while there, it was easier for you to do the wake voice than your yeah. regular one. <laughs> like, I've been, I've been really resting my voice all day. Like, you can kind of hear the uh, edge on it now. Yeah, but, yeah. We got a thousand bits here from Warth Boonin saying, loving these sessions. Glad I can finally watch a full episode live for once. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Thank you kindly. And we got 500 bits from Acer196 saying, love you guys. Is Eloy related to Mr. Steak? In spirit. I, I mean, yeah. everyone's related to everyone. We're all brothers and sisters. Yeah, all you know, we all, go back, we, all go back, we all go back to that same enzyme that's split into two. Yep. <laughs> Uh, you, Noah, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that guy, that guy, that enzyme. <laughs> Look, I don't believe in, I don't believe in evolution. I believe that God created man and cursed them, and then, we, and then I am the spawn of his incestuous relationship with his children. And then you, <laughs> do, and then you don't believe well, skeletons are real. No, absolutely, <laughs> no skeletons. No, I believe in skeletons. Um, I just don't think they can move on their own. I'm, I'm standing right here, Wake. Like <laughs> whatever. <laughs> nice puppetry. Wherever you are! It's unfortunate Rattles has an established... I can't wait for Mr. Rattles to just huck a fucking fireball at you once. I'm, I'm curious, when uh, Mead has to leave the island, is he taking his crew with him? Yep. Wow, man, that island is going to be empty. <laughs> I mean, not empty empty, but defenseless empty. No, they still got the under... They still got all the denizens of the Underdark. That giant wall of cannons. Yeah. <laughs> It's unfortunate yeah. that Rattles has an established business in that town, because he'd be a fun party member to just drive <laughs> away. He seems like Warp he might reality be... on our boat! <laughs> yeah, he might be a little OP. <laughs> I feel like we're going to have to come back to that town at some point and save it from the wrath of Nate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, so, how'd you guys feel about that session, though? I dug it. There was a little bit of everything there. And we're slowly getting hints as to why Wake hates the uh, Navy. Yeah. Yep. I think, think uh, we kind of dropped a lot of uh, nice little yeah, some, some lore. character stuff for later. And I'm so happy I finally got to, like, touch on the goblin war that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> the war of the goblins. It's a yeah, I see battle everybody else bounties. being happy here. Uh, well, make sure to tune in tomorrow when we continue playing some Metal Gear Solid Streams of Liberty. Yes. And, of course, we will be... Jumping back in with some Final Fantasy VII premiere on Friday. Yep. Nice. Hope you join us for that. And, of course, next Monday for the Bargain Barrel. And next Tuesday, remember, we'll be doing the D&D Q&A after TFS at the table. And we'll see you guys next time at the table. Later.